But she was going to, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our first public hearing of the adoption of the tentative budget um, on September the 8th, uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, is Commissioner Servia on the phone with us? Okay, thank you. So we do have a full house. Just wanted to make sure. Hello, All right, Madam we're Chairman. Gonna, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order, and we'll stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. And Commissioner Satcher, if you would, if you do an invocation for us first. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being able to do your work here on the earth. Lord, we pray that you would lead us and guide us uh, this evening and throughout the rest of the year. That's what we're talking about. So that these decisions would be executed properly, uh, that people would be kept uh, safe, secure, and uh, that your blessings would continue to be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Commissioner Bell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. Um. Uh, Dr. Hopes, did you have any opening comments, sir? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, we've uh, worked hard to get to this point tonight, including a tax cut for the taxpayers. Uh, the deadline for filing the petition with the Value Adjustment Board is September 10th, 2021. Uh, we have already uh, submitted and prepared the public notice uh, which we are required to do. And uh, Chair and Commissioner, so you understand, uh, those of you that have not been through the process before, there's pretty rigid timing. As you know, the school board went last night, and then we go tonight, and then the fire districts and cities kind of follow us in a, in a chain of events that gets us all to the point of meeting the state required deadlines for the, the trim notice. Uh, so, as you know, it is your prerogative to approve a budget, and you have the sole authority to change the budget, amend the budget, uh, but <clears throat> everything is teed up for the trim notice uh, to be filed timely. So, my recommendation, it, should there be anything that you want to change in the budget, to eliminate from the budget, uh, if you would do that through a motion to amend the budget, direct the county administrator to bring back a budget amendment at the first meeting in October, that will keep everything clean and, and we'll be able to follow the timeline. The, the motions following public comment, Madam Chair, when you prepare, uh, they have been written uh, in the agenda. Those motions need to be made exactly as printed. Uh, with regards to our, your statutory requirement uh, in, in, in meeting the deadlines for the trim notice. With that, Madam Chair, I am ready for you to begin <laughs> this public hearing. Are you sure? I am. <laughs> All right, well, we have a few people up here on this dais, including our administrator, that this is the first uh, budget for some of you that we've gotten to this uh, this point. So it'll prove very interesting. Okay, moving forward. Uh, staff presentation, Jan, good Hi. evening. Good evening, commissioners. I'd like to walk you through a PowerPoint presentation. As we were going through it today, I actually went ahead and added a few slides. They say new slide for clarity. Does not bring anything new to the table, but just for clarity for, for your um, viewers at home as well. So if you remember the taxable property values that we have, one second, um, you can see that in 2022 um, and 2021, these are the, they, they're actually the years that they're levying tax. So 2021 and then 2022 are the ones we're looking at. You can see the orange in this graph is the actual new construction that has accumulated over time, not your original homeowners, but the ones that were there before. Currently, we're at 41.6, and we estimated a 7% increase next year at 44.8. The countywide millage rate, after the last meeting, 
uh, we were instructed to go ahead and reduce the millage. As you can see here, this gives you a running total of the countywide millage. Countywide millage entails the general fund, transportation, library, children's services tax, et cetera. And I have another slide that depicts it. This one can show you that over time, very little change has occurred in the overall millage, but it does show in this year for FY22, it dropping to 6.3826. Here are the tentative millages. The ten this is a comparison of where we are tonight after the August 17th meeting and where you are in FY21. So going from the top, you can see the general fund, transportation, library, children's services, and parks. What you can see is a countywide operating decrease of 0.05. That occurring in the library fund as we discussed in the August 17th meeting. Now, let me move one step further. And you can also see the county, the unincorporated remain the same, and Palmer MSTU also remain the same. The environmental lands is not levied in FY22, but will be levied in FY23. And I'll point out the solution for your environmental lands as we go forward. I thought I'd compare the two because I know everybody gets a little confused when at the bottom of the screen, you see what you voted on on July 29th. And you can see that it was a 0.15 increase in the millage where the red arrow is showing. If you go to the top of the screen today, you can see that it's a 0.05 decrease from the prior year. But it is a 0.2 decrease from July 29th. I just don't want everybody to get confused in, in the numbers. But what we're suggesting is the top one, which you have a 0.05 millage decrease. This is just a, an example of the tentative budget that we have to advertise. This will go out in an advertisement on Friday, I believe, Sheila. And within two to five days, we have to have our public hearing, and our next one is on the 14th. The one thing I wanted, this is, a, this is an example of your sources. It is required by the Florida trim process that we advertise this. And the one thing I wanted to call your attention to, we listed the environmental lands, but we listed it at zero because you're not collecting this year. But we wanted to make sure that the taxpayers knew we have not forgotten and, and this is in the process. The second page of this identifies your uses. And at the bottom, we added that the environmental lands millage will be levied in FY23. So if we talk about your revenues by sources, I'm just going to tell you what your overall net budget is right now, and then I'm going to walk you through the changes. So currently, your revenues by source are $923.4 million. 31.5% of all the revenue you have is coming from property tax. The next one involves charges for services, which that also includes your utility system. And then finally, your license and permits and miscellaneous, all those together are 24.3. Um, your, your intergovernmental, which are your state and your federal and your local intergovernmental grants that we receive, are at 7.1% for a total of 923.4 million. So of all this funding you received, how did you allocate it out in this budget? So the next one is uses by function. So the general government at 9.78 are the general administrative needs of the government to keep running. Notice your highest investment is at public safety, that is continuing the pattern that you've had over the last five to 10 years. Um, it's at 24.15% or 223 million. Next after that is your fiscal, physical environment that one is very large at 20.73. That's your utility system. So that's where that falls into play. Public transportation is at 64.4 at 6.97%. I feel that's a bit of a misnomer when I, and I'm going to go over the CIP you just invested in because you just invested a substantial amount in your transportation. Human services at 34.8, culture and recreation is at 25.9, and there is your capital outlay, 21.5%.
That's a substantial increase, and I'll go over pieces of it in just a minute. Um, the other, the economic transfers to other governments, that's at 95.95 million. So your total is 923.4 million. So what changed? And I kind of want to walk through and answer any questions you have about this. We like to be transparent in what has changed within the budget. We have to tell you anything because remember on July 15th, we turned in your proposed budget to the clerk. So we have to identify to you anything that's changed since that point. So the first one is you're adding Port Manatee. Manatee County does not add that port until this hearing. Um, that's because they've gone through their budget process and they've provided you the, the final numbers that they need. Your special districts budgets, that is your, um, the housing authority and your others. Law and the law library. And then the prior year project and grant balances, 386 million. That is all of the projects that are ongoing right now that you have not spent to date. That's the remaining balance in all of them that are in process in your CIP. That's what that number represents. Oftentimes you'll see on the CAFR that your cash balance looks exceptionally high. That part of that is this 386 million. These are projects undergoing that you've already approved. Next on the list, um, Manatee County receives paramutual revenue. Um, that is coming from the state of Florida. We never recognize it until we recognize the Port of Manatee because we give it straight to the port. So that's why it's brought in at this point. Good news items. You had an increase in state revenue sharing and half cent sales tax of 1.4 million roughly. That came from the estimates that were established on the website late, July, um, late August, right, this year? So um, th we're bringing your budget up to the estimates that the state had. Up until the previous budget we had in July, that was our estimate. So we, it actually, the state came in higher. The biggest one I'm happy about is the next one, the increase in the infrastructure sales tax. The estimate came out and it's 4.2 million, higher than what we thought. So that's very good news. The next one, um, we forward funded to this budget several items in IST and stormwater. We, um, these were items that we've added on, and I'll go over those in just a second. We have a detailed list for you. We also had a debt service on new debt issue. There was a 60976 expenditure on it. The next two items we broke down a little bit because you have cash carryover on new debt. You issued $80 million in credit lines. We had to bring those in to this budget, and it wasn't in there before because we just passed those. So the $58.9 million added together, those two items, remember one is non-ad valorem, one is IST, um, those are the remaining amounts. We had to remember in our budget, every penny we have, we have to bring back in the budget. So we're acknowledging that we have those credit lines. And then for the CIP update, this tells you how strong your county is moving at this time. So when we came before you in July, we estimated your impact fees. Impact fees we usually do not get aggressive on. We cannot, um, they're not dependable because it may be a new wave and they may not grow like we think we're going to do. So we always try to be pretty consistently conservative, but aggressively conservative. But you can see here the difference from the time of July to what we just went through. Transportation impact fees have grown by 7.8 million. Utility facility investment fees have grown by 10.6. And the IST projects, remember that we went on credit line and we pulled in 14.2 for projects already existing that we had interfund loan borrowed. And then there's some minuscule wins that were down by 980, but the total difference is 31.8 million there. So that brought your total budget up by 514 million 729 620. And if you're okay, I'm gonna go through the deletions, which are next. We had some bad news items. Um, the state gas taxes came out. They were a little bit short. 
yeah. That one, we were hoping it would not come to this. We did our best estimate, but it actually, we had to lower them by 1.3 million. In doing that, we also had to lower the payments that we're giving to the municipalities out of that because we give a portion of all gas taxes to them. In addition, um, we these are the two items for the, the library and the environmental lands where you lowered the property tax, okay? Because we, we decided we were not bringing in the 0.15 and the library went down by 0.05. And I'm going to, if you hold on to that thought, I'll, ex I'll show you where it comes out later. Um, the communication services tax went down by 246322 um, Cash carryovers, I'm going to show you that in just a second, um, went up by seven, went down by $7.9 Some of that is to do with what we've been forward <laughs> funding going through this year. So we have to take, we were counting on it last year, but now we've put it in this year's budget. So that means we start a little less. And then the overall Southwest and North County TIF, they went down because you calculate that based upon your overall millage, and your millage went down. So therefore, those go down just a tiny bit. So your total budget at the current time is two billion one fifty four six twenty seven three eighty nine. Now. That's the total budget, and in Manatee County, they have historically done a net budget. And I, I think it's kind of good because you can now see what the two items I think everybody's interested in. The proposed budget when we were before you that we turned into the clerk on 715 was 853473108 So the changes to the net, now remember the net budget does not include transfers, it does not include internal service funds, nor does it include your cash balance, right? That we take those out for the net. So these are items that have hit the expenditures and changed. So the CRAs have gone down by 193. That has to do with the re-tax calculation. Um, the environmental millage, there is a set aside which identifies in this list 4,075,000 and also in parks for 1650000 Those are set aside specifically for your environmental millage. If you remember, and for everyone at home, the theory is we are taking the budget stabilization and you're going to use that before you're going to impose tax. So these two items are set aside within the general fund in parks. We'll work with the clerk's office to bring them in to Whenever the items start going, I know this year with the environmental lands, you have a work session coming up that will start it. You'll have a list of projects brought before you. You'll approve those. And then from that process, you have the availability to go to bonding. That takes about three months. And this money is set up so that it can get you started on all that. And the next year, you can impose the tax, which will pay for the debt. Going on from there, um, small minuscule things have changed. Tax collector's fees went down a little bit in an item. Um, you had some operating expense reduction in personnel, 26421 We're just adjusting for all the little fine things that we know. Um, this is an operating expense. We advance funded something into 21. It's non-recurring, so it was 688900 There's the debt service again for 60976 You had the TIF payments which also went down, as I explained before, 126046 and your payment to the municipalities. Now, the reason this one is up is because we accidentally let out Longboat Key, and I'm sure they're not going to be really unhappy about that. So we put them back in. So where they went down, it's the 350 coming back in. <laughs> it's a big budget. So we're just making sure we're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. Yeah. Moving down, you have the port budget at $21.3 million, and then there is your CIP project changes, the credit line, the IST credit line, and then other project changes for 923. And again, there is the amounts that are set aside, and they will be in your book when it is published so everyone can see exactly where they are. Going from there, I think the next question would be, how much do I have left? So this is the reserves for cash balance. This is the item that holds your 20% and your stabilization. And then for your internal service fund and solid waste, those are the insurance, fund, insurance funds and the solid waste, the closure. 
So the main place you're wanting to look is in the middle column, which is 86.5 million, and that shows you what's left in each of the funds. Um, what I thought I would do is also show you this. So this provides you 22, and then what happens in 23? This is just your stabilization. You're going from 86.5 down to 51.2. The only items then left are items that are special revenues. One thing I want to point out in 23, you have an increase in general fund, but that's because we have not included any of the constitutional's increases. We wait until they come in, so most of that will go to your constitutional's usually is how that works. The other thing I wanted to point out, in your environmental lands in the second year, there is your 6.7 that will come from your millage. We put it in stabilization, unknowing the programming for it at the current time. And there was one other, tourist tax. Tourist tax is at 8.3, which is right there in the middle. Please know that you have two uh, building projects that are kind of coming before you that are in the CIP. And so because the tourist tax is doing so exceptionally well, you may not have to borrow as much. It just depends, but we'll bring that before you and as to your decision as to what we do. So how does that look compared to last year? General fund has gone down in stabilization by 24.2 million, transportation 3.1, library 4.4, children's services has gone up. I didn't put that as a decrease, they'll spend that. They'll reprogram that in and spend that back out. Uh, parks has gone down 6.5 and unincorporated 2.9. So a 92.4% decrease in stabilization in the general fund in 20, from 21. And again, environmental lands, they're held in reserves, general fund and parks, 5.7 million for this year to handle everything it takes for what your plans are with that as it comes before you. Highlights of the budget, just for everyone listening, you've added 19 new positions to the sheriff's office for 2.6 million. You've provided 149.4 million for the sheriff's budget this year. You've added 12 24-hour float paramedic positions, a deputy director in the along with that in public safety, and four district chiefs for a total of 17 positions. One 911 telecommunicator and two 311s. And within the CIP, specifically for public safety, as it is one of your highlights in the budget, you have added the Sheriff's Fleet Facility, the new property evidence building, and the new jail medical wing are included in this budget. Also within this budget for public safety is the Lake Manatee EMS base station, a Moccasin Wallow EMS base, excuse me, an EMS station, and a North County EMS base station. In addition, if you're focusing on the emphasis of infrastructure, those were the two highest priorities of your budget. Over the next five years, you are investing 350.3 million in transportation, 80.3 million in parks, and public safety, 339.1 million. For the, and then again, there is your gross and your net budget as final totals. And then I'll stop there, because that will be the motions, but I, that's my presentation at this point. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Whitmore. The last slide that you showed us, Jan, so I saw we're going to have three EMS stations more or less north of the county, correct? And then yes, um, I saw you had float, where is it, float <laughs> paramedics. Is that um, to cover what we have now? And then are we going to be adding more to cover the, the new EMS stations in the next budget or what? As it goes forward, these were paid for by um, when you are participating and it's coming in your next um, meeting. You're actually participating in the LIP program that has to do with paramedics. And the funding you're receiving from that the is federal. establishing these items so that you can go, that you will give relief to where you have and you have the availability to expand a bit when you uh, need I, it. I remember that. And, I, and I, with, with uh, CARES money, you right. approved the purchase of, is it five basic uh, life support ambulances? Right. So we're adding to the, the fleet of coverage to handle all the new growth in the north part of the county principally. And transfers yes. when we need them to facilities, good. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you. Is that it?
I don't have any other commissioners on the board at this time. Wait a minute, I do now. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so Children's Services has two million. We, during our budget talks, um, we heard from foster care. Does foster care fall under Children's Services, the guardian ad litem positions? Are they falling under Children's Services? No, that, they don't. They have a separate line item. They're, yeah, it's a separate line item. And we're happy to bring those back to you to resolve if okay, there's well, any they questions. They had $2 million in the bank, and they had requested an additional position. <clears throat> the only problem with that one, the children's services tax is coming from that ordinance that, that has specific language in it. I'm happy to look at it and see if they can contribute to it. I can't stand here tell you that it does. I'm not okay. sure about that. Okay. Um, then public safety, this, this caught my eye in previous meetings, uh, but it wasn't the time to sort of start picking things apart. Um, but a deputy director of public safety, I'm hoping for some kind of justification on that position. Public safety just got an, a $90,000 a year uh, PIO, uh, and now we need a deputy director, and we're adding hundreds of thousands with just two positions to, to public safety. That Later. one went, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, um, that one was uh, requested inside the decision units. Um, it had to do with the structure of what was going on with the additional um, 12 people and then the four district chiefs and looking at it overall, I, I'm happy to bring Jake Sauer back to let him explain. And in addition to that, we, we have been realigning that department. Uh, as you may recall, I mentioned that we're moving, uh, we've moved jail medical mm -hmm. over to public safety where most of our health and medical people are. Uh, and so you're, you're rapidly expanding public safety, EMS, 911 operators to really handle the growth in the east part of the county. And so that has a lot to do with it. And, and we're, we're not filling that position yet. Uh, we're, I, I am not anywhere near finished in realigning that department and, and putting various divisions in better alignment for more effective operations. Okay, I mean, I would like to hear from Jake on it ultimately. Uh, I don't know, you know, what the feeling of the rest of the board is on that, but I, I would like to hear more on it. And the, the last thing I have on what we've heard so far is EMS stations also under public safety. Um, we, you know, we always shared with the fire departments. The EMS was always housed with fire. Um, and I think most of us have heard um, rumors of the two not getting along and sort of turf wars uh, at those facilities. Um, why is it that we can no longer share with fire departments? If, if, it, is, it, comes to, if it does come down to a turf war situation, uh, I, I'm not going to be in favor of spending millions of taxpayer dollars uh, to fund EMS stations when you know, they can learn to get along essentially um, with the fire departments and continue to share with them because it's not just the initial capital outlay, is it? I mean, there's long-term maintenance and replacement uh, operating costs. Operating costs, sure. Sure, sure. So I, I'd like to hear more about that as well. So, and Madam Chair, I will tell you, I had a, a very productive meeting with one of our uh, fire chiefs in the north part of the county this afternoon. And that was one of the topics that we discussed about better collaboration and, and, and shared resources and facilities especially as we are all focused on, on, on covering uh, both emergency services and fire uh, uh, services in, in these new growth areas. That doesn't totally answer the question, though. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, you know, currently the city of Bradenton has essentially, you know, say it politely, asked us to leave their firehouses. And so they're, the firehouse at GT Bray, um, which we used to work out of, you know, we, don't, we no longer work out of that. City of Bradenton is building a new firehouse, <coughs> and they intentionally are, have designed it to not include space for our EMS. Right. Um, so <laughs> this comes back to you know sort of the sort of the, and I don't think it was Jake Sauer. From what I, I've heard, it was actually his predecessor, um, on the, the fire chief, <laughs> that weren't getting along. Um, so you know, sort of brings me back to the turf war situation. Why why can they not share now? Now we're supposed to also build a. Um, a EMS station at Bray, a million and a half bucks, because guys couldn't get along. And as you know, you both both of us have been having conversations with the mayor of Bradenton about how we can uh, 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 rehabilitate whatever occurred in the past before our time to see how we can better serve the residents. So 
Back to these EMS stations. <laughs> is it not possible for us to get along with North River and? Well, I think it is. As I mentioned, one of one of these stations is is near where the the parish fire chief said he needs to build a station. Why don't we do it together? That's um, where I am. And that's um, that was one of the meetings I had this afternoon. Okay, so with with, with I my, agree with you. Yeah, I, obviously I need I need three friends here, but you got uh, one. Okay, well, I need two one. friends I don't here. Know about two more, but <laughs> um, but if, if we're if we're this is the appropriate time to redline things, I think these EMS stations uh, are on my radar. So I would like to hear from from the rest of the board on it. I'm next. I would board. I would okay. be careful because the funding you... sources for that are coming for for some of the money that the federal government's doling out, and and regardless of whether we oh. build it with a fire station. Oh. We're still going to need to contribute to the joint building. Sure, well, that, that's what I'm getting at, I guess, is, is if the federal government's contributing, obviously, if we're sharing a fire station, they're going to want Ooh. us to pony up for the portion of it that we're going to be using, which makes sense. Uh, can we use federal funds for that? A ARP dollars can be used for EMS stations. Uh, they cannot be used for fire stations. Okay, so there's, there's no way around this. Uh, and, and we're, how much, what we're percentage building another they, city. Well, and then what percentage are they are they actually pay, are they funding? And, and then what percentage of long term maintenance are they funding? And what percentage of replacement costs are they funding? If if I may, um, I think we can take this away as a an item that we bring back to you, Thank and you. then we and we bring it back in a regular scheduled meeting and or either a work session where you can understand more about it and the topics. I, I, I think that might be better. There's a lot of balls up in the air right now with the ARP. Um, there's, the ARP is changing daily. I mean, I've never had it where a grant is doled out, and then they're going to tell you the instructions every other week, how to, and it changes. Usually the instructions come, and then you're given the grant. So this one is kind of backwards. So um, I think it would probably be really wise if we brought it all back to you, laid all the cards out of how it is. Sure. That's fine. I'm all for getting, you know, the full story and, and yeah. all the information. I just want to ensure that mm -hmm. these mi these millions of dollars don't pass the point of no return. We we, we hear you, it's and and we we in. can't we can't build anything unless we bring a contract to you. So, Correct. Uh, but I you have a button to push. Oh, I'm sorry. Help me. <laughs> I can't keep up. Okay, I, that is uh, from what I've heard so far. That's all I have at the moment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm next on the board. I would totally agree. I'm glad you brought this up. I didn't know that you were going to. I, I have watched uh, EMS public safety grow leaps and bounds in the last few years. I mean, the first building we had to buy, you know, was in Lakewood Ranch. EMS had to have the building in Lakewood Ranch. It seems to me that we keep adding on and on, and I understand, trust me, about the growth in North County and, and East County. I mean, I live in it. I see it. No one has to explain the growth to me. I probably understand it better than most of you sitting up here, except for perhaps Commissioner Satcher and Commissioner Cruz. I just um, but at any rate, it, the bottom line is it, it seems to me it's getting out of hand. So I'm glad this was, in a sense, flagged. I think we need a little bit better uh, of an explanation. I will tell you that I've asked these questions. I specifically ask about the deputy director all of a sudden that we need uh, and how that was going to be handled. Um, it, it just seems like that, you know, we're, we're building, I'm not going to use the word Taj Mahal, I'm not going to say you it because you it. said that, but, uh, you know, the bottom line is it, is it does seem like it's getting out of hand to me, so I would appreciate uh, do we need to do a, we don't need to do a budget amendment on that tonight because mm -hmm. you're going to bring it back, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and give us a better yes. explanation. Yes. Because I think that's kind of where we are right now. Um, it, this is just not okay. And Dr. Time. Hope says correct. No building is going to be built at these, at the levels these are without coming before you. Well, see, that's another thing. And I, I thank you for bringing that up. I meant to. I know that there's been a problem uh, with EMS in the fire districts. I, I recall that. I, I was here at the time, um, and I don't understand it either. You know, maybe we need to remember why we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is working for the citizens of Manatee County. Um, there shouldn't be a problem between <coughs> EMS and the fire districts. I mean, it's ridiculous that that's even taking place. So, you know, maybe we need to just... Get a grip. Pull it down a little bit. Is, is Attorney Clegg here? 
I, yes, he is. In the audience. Where is he? He's I don't in the see audience. him. I believe he gave up his seat for me. I saw him earlier, me. but I don't there see him is. in the audience. There he is. <laughs> he gave up okay. his seat for me. I, I knew he wasn't sitting in the audience, because I'd look twice. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm hiding in a booth back there. <laughs> So, Mr. Clegg, thank you for being with us, and yes, I'm sorry you're not up here on the dais. I wish you were. What um, can I do for you? It, well, I'm just curious, you know, on this thing with, with EMS and fire. I mean, I am correct that the first building that we built, uh, or bought, I should say, we didn't build it, we bought it, was the one in Lakewood Ranch for EMS. Is that correct? I do not recall. I'm sorry. It was More probably three, four years ago. It used to be the um, Red Cross building in Lakewood Ranch at one time. I recall it exactly. I'm not certain, honestly. We have quite a few properties, so yeah. I don't I don't remember the history. I apologize. Find out. Yes, ma'am. I'll be happy to look into that Thank for you. you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Commissioner Whitmore. I don't really and think Mr. that's Clegg, a... I'm sorry. Your button's pushed. Did you... No, you that's were... me, because no. you're, you're making me you? push it. But, yeah, we, yeah, we changed name tags for the meeting. There? You told the administrator to push his button, so he did. Well, no, it says Attorney Clegg. Well, well, thank you. Commissioner Whitmore, go ahead. Um... In all due respect, I don't like how um, this is going. You may, uh, you may agree, or you may whatever you say, Commissioner, uh, um, Madam Chair. I don't agree with all of it. I have been around when the fire department asked EMS to leave 59th Street, um, Anna Maria Island. Um, at one point, we were given like a few months' notice, and we had to buy a place. We had to move into some place. I think it was around 59th Street in that area, or may have been south. We also um, parish. I think our EMS is in a house right now because you know we need a place in that location. You also got to remember these are two separate entities. Fire district is separate than Manatee County, and we're all taxed for the fire district. So most of the time that I ever recall, the fire district always owned the firehouse. Mm -hmm. And then we paid. And then they asked us to leave. So what are you going to do? Tell them uh, you got to do it? No. Let the county administrator deal with it, which I totally agree. And if we can, we can. As far as the deputy EMS director, you do realize that our, um, pub our public safety director has taken on more responsibilities because um, Mr. Scott, I mean, um, Administrator Scott is trying to align our departments better, which is fine. And you don't think he deserves an assistant. And I know Madam Chair had an issue when it was brought up at the very beginning of the budget season. Um, I think we have assistants. Uh, Administrator Scott has four deputy directors. And so um, to think that various other departments <laughs> don't deserve it, uh, you don't know really what they do. And if you don't, I think you should meet with um, our public safety director to see what the duties would be. We hire the administrator, and he de he decides what best fits. He met with every department, and you approved this position, and you just said it's not going to happen right away. We've got so much stuff going on. But I did hear recently that um, jail medical is under him now, correct? Is it already in effect? Yes. Anything else new that we don't know that's under him? Not at the moment. Okay. And nice so he know. doesn't deserve... Uh, a deputy director. I just don't get that. Any other department, we wouldn't have heard this. Public safety is the most important thing that we do as county commissioners. <coughs> and if our administrator thinks that we need a director, I think we all need to talk to Jake, like, um, like um, Kevin said, and see if we feel comfortable. But I don't, uh, I don't like, you know, I don't want to be disparaging to anybody up here. Our, this is what our administrator recommended, and if you don't agree, talk to him behind doors, and you don't have to sit up here and make faces at me. So that's all. Okay, that's it. Dr. Holmes. I, I, I wanted to bring up that I, I appreciate raising the EMS and, and fire department issue because it's not just about buildings. Uh, we find ourselves having to compete with the fire departments to hire paramedics. Uh, we are competing with the fire department in union negotiation for the paramedics. So I, I have been you know, considering it because it's not just about buildings. It's the, the community needs to come together around fire uh, services and EMS and, and, and whose lane belongs in the, the various entities because it's, it, it's hard. We, I, 
I have been shocked that I have to compete with all of these various fire districts for EMS personnel when we have uh, an EMS reach that, that, that spans the, the county. So I appreciate it. We are focused on it. We, we do talk about it and we will bring a workshop to you uh, to have these discussions and dialogues and see if we can't bring all the parties together to find out how we can more effectively serve the, the citizens of Anti County. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I think that, first of all, some of the awkwardness, we've had this discussion before, it just comes from sunshine. So we're not able to hash out uncomfortable stuff behind closed doors. We have to hash out uncomfortable stuff right out in front of God and everyone, yeah, on television. <laughs> it's always before <laughs> and, um, God. <laughs> so, and, and there is that element of momentum, you, you know, where the first time you hear something, this is so early, and the next time, you know, no, oh, we're still, and then the next time, if you change it now, it's the end of the world, you know, and, and that's just because it's a, it's a big, you know, it's a big budget, um, and so f if I understood the county administrator right, um, he'd like for us to bring things up that we could make amendments on later, um, that we would pass what we see here, um, with, and so I, I could see us definitely bringing that up. There's, uh, there's Makes different sense. things that I was that I've got in the back of my head that I'm not excited about or not I don't see a justification for some of the money we're spending as I go through, um, and once again that's uncomfortable to say that out loud. But I mean I think you know do we need to give that much to that? Um, so so I like the idea of and and is our goal here to everything that kind of fits that description get it out and open right now? No, that is not our goal. But at some point, right? I mean, we have this meeting and the next meeting. Next week, it's done. Yeah. Okay. This so, is the appropriate time. This is the appropriate time <laughs> if you have an issue. Um, it's the time. Uh, so, and this is this has nothing to do with cutting anything, but this just has an idea or just a thought. And uh, I would have texted him, but I've got to get his cell number. Um, I wonder if we could work to where EMS and if we had some sort of substations for the sheriff, if that would be something he'd be interested in. Because <laughs> um, parish, we're always wishing we had, uh, you know, anyway. Um, so if this is the appropriate time to make waves. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you're doing great. $500,000, I believe it is, to the... Um, to the Manatee players, that seems interesting when I look through the budget. That's yes, it's TDC money, I believe. Yeah, Correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you scared me. Can we do something <laughs> else with it? Uh, we have, that's your district. I understand it's tourist money, but I mean, do we have a say in where it goes, or is it just the TDC said and that's that? No, the TDC recommends. Recommends, so we get the this final board. say. We do. That's what we use for advertisement and stuff. Yeah. It is. I think, well, the decision. So I think we need to look into that. I also think that, uh, commission, I won't call names, but multiple commissioners have said that they would prefer, rather than laying out $6 million for a for a dog shelter, doing two at a time, and the, the powers that be can decide if they want to rent a space for $2 million. <laughs> Or they can decide if they want to let it save up for three years and then do six million and do a six million dollar shelter. So those are the things that I've looked at that I would not propose we change right here, right now. I understand what we're doing is that we're going to pass what we see because, as you said, it's teed up for all the local governments. Um, so I understand that, but I do say, you know, I don't like making waves, but those are the ones that I've seen that make me raise my eyebrows and think maybe there'd be a better way. You just did. <laughs> Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, then Commissioner Cruz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm so happy to hear me. that Commissioner Satcher doesn't like to make waves. <laughs> 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 um, so I just wanted to speak to some of Commissioner Whitmore's comments. Um, I was 
on the deputy director, I was I was really just looking for clarification. Uh, I didn't say that I wanted to immediately pull it from the budget. I was really looking for justification, I guess. Uh, it's certainly not an assistant. It's it's a deputy. Right, exactly. Okay. I 100% um, agree. So, and, you know, we, we do hire in, uh, you know, the county administrator, and, and he does, of course, bring us a proposed budget, but it is, it is of course, our job to approve said budget and go through it. It's actually the only uh, responsibility in our job description, um, although I do more than that, just to be clear. Um, and on the EMS stations, uh, again, I'm asking for clarity before I vote on that. It's, it's millions of taxpayer dollars uh, and committing taxpayers to the long-term maintenance <coughs> replacement of these facilities. And it's a slippery slope. That's, that's something else that's on my radar. Once we start building a couple EMS stations, you know, that will not be the end of it. Right. right? These, are, these will only be the first. And, and eventually, every ambulance in Manatee County will be run out of a county-built, <coughs> county-owned, county-maintained um, EMS station, and uh, they'll be popping up all over Manatee County, which is, of course, growing and expanding as fast as just about any region in the country. So I just wanted to, to clarify that. Um, Commissioner Satcher uh, made a wave um, and brought up the animal shelter. So if we conclude this, I do think that the board should uh, discuss and debate the animal shelter as well. I don't want us to be all over the board here at one time, but I, I do, that is an issue that I guess I can push my button again later but I think we should discuss it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, two things. I, was, well, I put myself on the board to actually respond specific to something that Dr. Hope said, but before I get into that, I, I wouldn't be messing with TDC money. There's, there's a whole TDC board that diligently makes recommendations with the money to just randomly look for any number just to say, hey, how about this one, and, and pull it out. It seems extremely, extremely arbitrary, unless you can specifically say what Manatee players use this $500,000 for, why they don't need that $500,000, oh, and then boy. come up with something else that you believe is more. I'm just saying, it seemed arbitrary, and now you're scared people. People watch these meetings. You got you got Janine and people out at players, like, stressing and sweating right now because they're talking about pulling half a million dollars for, for seemingly no reason without any justification. I, I mean, let, let's be cognizant of what we're saying because people do pay attention to us up here. So that was a pretty specific request to, to yank money from a, an organization that, that a lot of people really, really enjoy in Manatee County. It's, it's the only group we've got here. Right. I, I, what? I said I know you do. What? Enjoy it. I do enjoy the player. I, 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 I go all the time. Uh, but still a half a million dollars. But, but, as for, but, but as for my actual question, you were talking about EMS and fire, and we were talking about competing for, for people and competing. Yeah. It, it kind of is disheartening to, to hear that. I mean, aren't both these groups effectively doing the same thing? This isn't a revenue generator. We're not competing for investment bankers <laughs> to, to increase our bottom line. It's, it's to get people help that they need and get them to where they need to be. Why are we competing here? Th this is ridiculous. We're, we're, we're competing with each other for, to, to fight over doing the same service for public safety in Manatee County. Th there shouldn't even be two groups, much less. I mean, we only have one electric company for a reason. There's government. I'm just saying there's government-made monopolies for a reason. It keeps costs and it keeps things efficient, and it gets the absolute best people in one place to do something for the best good of Manatee County. So... I, I don't like the fact we're competing, and you know we shouldn't need to. If we have all this money to build these EMS stations, I'd rather compete with Pinellas in Hillsborough and pay our people, get our EMS people the, the money that they deserve, keep the best EMS people in here, because the people in EMS are way more important than the building they drove out of to come help you at the end of the day when you need help. So I'd rather find a way to sit down with all these fire departments and our EMS and the union and everyone and say, let's, let's stop competing and do what's best for Manatee County. And let's take, these, take this money from these buildings, not to your point, not just that we have to build, that we have to maintain, and let's go out and hire the absolute best EMS personnel from all these surrounding counties and be the, the premier EMS location that people want to come work at because we are providing them the, 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 the equipment <laughs> and the salary and the training to make them a premier organization. Thank you. Commissioner Servia, are you on the board, ma'am? I think someone. No, mentioned. I'm listening, though. Thank you. OK, I thought you had a question. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. Yeah, EMS is the only game in town that provides advanced ALS and, BL, and um, BLS. 
Recently, as we all know, in the last few years, FIRE asked to be included, and they went to the state, and I forgot what it's called, the acronym. And PLS. so they are allowed, no, they're allowed to, um, CPC. what's it called? Cor CPC. No. Yeah, yeah, I it? think that's what it is. And now they are allowed to have paramedics on the fire trucks. Now it has to be par paramedics, so they're all right there. They're taking our paramedics, they're paying more. Yep. When have you all ever been to a fire district meeting where you live? Well, I used to be the mayor of a city, yes, and sir. nobody ever went. And they raised our taxes every year. And I think mine got, I don't know if mine are raised this year. Um, <coughs> but what I'm saying is um, it's 100% true that we are uh, training these guys, and they're going to other counties, and they're going to our fire um, and being paid more. And that's just a fact of life. What we want to do about it, I think, I think fire's unionized, mm -hmm. and so is EMS. So, so is EMS. So you have two unions. So that's something we'll have to work on during the year. In the meantime, who provides the advanced life support for Manatee County is, is our EMS. I have personally called, my husband's here, two or three times EMS. Fire can't do at a certain point. They can't transport you. They can't do other things. It has to be EMS. If you want to be transported, it has to be EMS. So um, this is a whole, and if, George, you want to get involved with it, more power to you because we've tried in the past. You know, we can all say we've been nodding our head, oh, yeah, we need to do this. Well, we haven't done it. And um, so if you, you had said you showed an interest, maybe you and Scott can talk, but you're dealing with major unions and a lot of money. If we can afford that and our taxpayers are okay paying our EMS and our, uh, our paramedics, the EMTs, our staff would love you, you know, Sauer would love you because then we wouldn't have to be training them and them going somewhere else. And I know we'll, we, talk, we will talk about the animal shelter, I guess, tonight. Sorry, Andre, we may be here a few hours. But um, I um, respectfully ask, um, Boss getting a $15 million library. Satcher's getting tons and tons of roads. You're getting all of West Brainton done. And all I'm asking is for a lousy $6 million out of a $993 million budget. But unfortunately, a few, maybe just one, is taking this personally because it's Carol Whitmore asking. If you guys asked, it would get passed. And that's what bothers me. This, we're not taking the personal out of this. I have asked for one thing in years, so I would ask you to please reconsider it. I support you guys in your districts. This is the one passion that I represent for, you know, the whole county like George does, and this is what they asked me to do. So I would just appreciate it before you tear it down tonight. Please, I can't talk to you because of sunshine, but please talk to Dr. Hopes. There is a need, just some of you, maybe, maybe just one, refused to, since the day I've been up here, have refused to even consider it because I've been bringing it up. So anyway, that's all. But EMS is very important, George. I'm telling you because we, that is the problem right now. And how many, we had 190 out with COVID so far? You know, and who's, ta who's remanding those trucks? We only have, what, 18 or 19 EMS trucks right now. And we're getting five others now. But then you've got to have staff. And then you train them and then they go somewhere else. So if you have a, a way to improve this, God bless you. That's all. All right, I'm, I'm next on the board. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't think that it's a matter of being personal up here about anything. I think it's a matter of trying to figure out the best things to do right now with the money that we have. Um, I, I mean, I, for me, it's certainly not personal. I don't know about it. I can't speak for everybody else. <coughs> Uh, about the EMS and, and the fire districts, not all fire districts are using paramedics on their trucks. Um, I know East Manatee is not doing that. They might. There's only one. Yeah, but, East Manatee is the only one. Yeah, but, I mean, they might end up doing it, but I know they're not doing it yet. And it's because of the expense uh, of doing it and the training. Um, and also, they haven't had the need because uh, finally uh, – for the first time ever, Mayaka just got an ambulance last year, I think it was. So, uh, you know, things are moving along slowly out east, but it is coming, um, it's coming forward. Um, 
You know, as far as the county administrator, yes, it is the county administrator's job to bring a budget. And it is the county administrator's job to figure out what to do with each department. But ultimately, that decision comes back to this board. We are responsible. The county administrator reports to the seven commissioners. So, you know, it is one of our biggest responsibilities um, as commissioners uh, is the budget and to make sure that we're taking care of our citizens. And, and I don't think anybody up here on this board, anybody, would not want to do what's best for, for all of our citizens. I think Commissioner Cruz had a lot of good points about EMS. Um, you know, with the nine years I've been on this board, I can remember um, going to the um, public safety building, and, and, and Commissioner Whitmore, you were there, actually, um, where we sat there and listened to paramedics, uh, EMS, coming up and telling us, uh, you know, what their issues were, what they felt they were missing, and what they would love to see. And we had been address, you know, told before the meeting started that we could not interact and, and discuss anything with them. We had to sit there because of the union. So, but it was an eye opener for me, and I think some things did change from that, uh, from having that meeting. And, and you know, uh, Dr. Hopes, it might not be a bad idea to have a, another meeting, um, you know, like we did then, because it was really good. We learned a lot about our. EMS people that were working with us and and you know what they were working terrible Hard. schedules and it's not as bad now it is better uh, I mean God bless them they, they were working so much overtime that's how they made their money if they didn't have overtime they really didn't make a decent salary they couldn't even go on vacation uh, the way that they should have been allowed to so it was a very stressful situation for them um, I can remember uh, some of the EMS people literally went into tears sitting there talking to us, um, you know, about things that they experienced and how they were treated. Uh, and by the way, you know, we, we, it was not under uh, Director Sauer at the time, and, and so they were in no way responsible for any of that. It was before. Um, so it has come a long way. But Obviously, it is growing, and it's something that we need to take very seriously and look at. And I do believe that that's exactly what we said. We need to look at it and get a better understanding as to what's going on and make sure that we're doing the best we can do. Uh, or do we need to make some changes? We don't know because we don't know enough to make that determination. Um, you know, it's easy to sit here and, and um, it, it, you know, find fault with this board or, or others, but it's not time to find fault. It is time to get the best budget that we can get done. And I think that's the, um, uh, I think that's what everybody up here wants to see. I don't think anybody has anything personal to be gained in any way, shape, or form. Um, that's terrible. Uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, you're next, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I would just say that I, I support Commissioner Cruz's general idea, just so Director Sauer knows what we're looking for yeah. when he comes to us with information. Exactly. Uh, I like Commissioner Cruz's idea that we take those funds that we would build stations with and, you know, allocate that towards improving pay and, and the, you know, quality of life, if you will, or, or, you know, ability to perform their duties of our of our EMS. Um, I did a ride-along out in my district out of GT Bray with, uh, with the EMS. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was just practice. That, I'll ever do it that was his practice run. That was my practice run, yes. Uh -huh. Technically, I've ridden in an ambulance out of GT Bray twice in the past few months. Um, so, but at any rate, <laughs> um, I did do a ride along. They were, they were in both Recently. of my experiences. Yeah. And both of my experiences, um, our paramedics were extremely professional and They're did a awesome. fantastic job. Um, and so, you know, I, I would say that. As you know, trained professionals, they they do deserve a very competitive wage, um, and if that means that we need to look at what we're paying them, um, then I think we should do that. When it comes to public safety, sheriff's department, you know, these these are the top, right these are the top priorities. Yeah, right here. And, exactly. Um, and these these folks should be should be paid a, a wage where they can afford to live in this county. And obviously, the cost of living in this county is skyrocketing, especially in the past you know year or six months. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm totally for it. I support what you want to do there, Commissioner Cruz. And that's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy. <clears throat> yeah, some of, some of this is 
kind of biking for it, but I think I put put my take on it also as far as um, identifying ways to support the EMS and the fire department, you know, collaboration opportunities. We don't really know how that look. The true players have to come to the table. But I think with them listening um, to us tonight, um, there's, there's been some communication that's being said, hey, we, we want to make sure everybody get along. We want to make sure we're doing what's best for Manatee County um, by all angles. So all of us are on the same page with that. But how does that look? We're not necessarily sure, but we do need to make sure we get a different focus lens on it, and especially if we're talking about you know internal um, um, com competition. That's always good and bad. It depends on how um, you, you look at it. A as far as the, um, the 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 animal sh the animal shelter, I've said it before, and I'll say it um, again. You know, it it's a f philosophy thing. Um, we we have the money <laughs> for the animal shelter, and it's it's, it's about whether or not we want to move forward on it or whether or not we do. I do want to move forward on it. Um, it will always have um, my, my support. Um, <laughs> and, and the reasons why, if, if we look at the growth and everything that's taking place and we look at the state of the animal shelter that's in North River, and then I made sure that I went out and visited um, Bishop and the way things are, are, are moving, I think we need to get in front of this and, and move forward on the animal shelter. So I, I always you know, have a stance as far as um, supporting the, the animal shelter. And I hope this board does um, also. When, when we're talking about the, um, the deputy assistance, I, I just like for us to be um, consistent. I mean, we, we've, we've, we've come along and nothing against nobody that's been hired, but it's kind of, we've had three um, that's been presented for us the same way. You know, and, and we, we are happy with all the work and all the things that they're, they're doing, all of them are performing, performing within their natural ability with more workloads and things like that, and there has not been any resistance to that. And um, and I may have missed it, but I think it's been the, the justification was the, this is the direction that we're going, and we want to make sure that we support our um, our county administrator. Um, and from where I am, as you know, the <laughs> chuckles up here, we, we we're without one right now. But I would I would want to support the county administrator in that aspect as far as the move forward. You always ask for just justification with the intent to move forward, but I don't think we need to say that we may want to look at this or redline it. And because we again we may be putting ourselves in a situation where we have these flares of inconsistency on, on how things or how things are being done. Because we we didn't and in, in, in I probably talked to Charlie maybe three or four times a day. <laughs> um and and we, <laughs> I'm serious, and, and that 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 guy right there is. Uh, I'm listen. You cannot get a better guy on how he responds to difficult situations and make things happen. I mean, this, this guy. It, it, we have to find another word past awesome, and that would be Charlie. But the reality of it is, we, we had no resistance or no <laughs> justification or anything like that. We just kept moving because we trust our staff and we trust the county. Um, administrator in that aspect. So I would just say for us to kind of continue to move on that. I don't know what's going on with all the EMS and the talk back and forth, but I do I do think we need to make sure we extend that support and find a way um, to, to to collaborate. <laughs> just, just and last thing, last last thing. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, you I got a lot of love and respect for you and you know that regardless of some of our philosophy differences and everything like that. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to my man James. I, I mean, thought he and you were I, talking to Dr. Hopes. I was getting and, ready to get excited. He and, and I just made uh, James and I have a lot of you know love and respect for each other. You took the win out of me when when you brought up Manatee when you, when you brought up Manatee players. And here's the reason why. <laughs> I know the work that they do. I know the work that they do and just this week um, with another um, entity that I work with, we're collaborating, getting some 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 youth and, and teaching them skills and things like that that take place. And just to say, hey, we need to look at that. Um, I'm like, whoa, you know. And I could imagine what, like you're saying, I could imagine what no. Janine <laughs> and everybody else, you know, those employees and everybody else is saying. Well, we're thinking about taking a half a million. I think, it, you know, with all due honesty, I, I agree with that concern. You know, for us to just you know throw it out there like that. I do think you know we need to make sure we understand that's TDC, and we do approve it. It comes recommended through us. Um, I wouldn't be in support of that, um, not because of Janine and it being the Manatee players, but because of the effort and the things that they do 
to make a difference in our community, and not just for the adult entertainment, but also for the youth educational strife that they make <laughs> also. <laughs> and I know that you went, George Cumber, I know that you went to Manatee Players with your family a couple of weeks ago. We, Thank we were you, talking that's about what it. I was talking right. about. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We, we were talking about it. So I would just, you know, uh, kind of look at that from a different focus lens. And that's me. Whew, what a meeting. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. And I think we do need to at least say something that we did lose a 911 operator this week from COVID. I don't know, I just found that out indirectly through the grapevine, but yeah, we did lose a 911 operator. So that's our fourth person that's passed away. So um, we're sorry to hear about that. Um, the recurrent funds that um, George left, but I know he'll be able to hear us. Um, the salaries, you can't put in towards salaries because you're looking at recurrent term, uh, versus one-time expense for capital, which are the EMS buildings. And this money from that you're talking about to build these EMS stations, yeah, we'd have to staff them, but just remember, we can't use that money, first of all, that we're getting to improve salaries because you have to, first of all, you're not allowed to, but even if we do do it, it has to be um, recurring, whatever we do. And I know you all know that. Um, the six million dollars, thank you. Um, I'm please gonna continue to ask for that. Uh, so many people had contacted me. I said, no, that, that's not gonna come up tonight. It'll probably come up at the next meeting because it hasn't come up lately. I respectfully asked you, and I am, you know, on when um, Chairman was chair before, I was told directly by her that I was never to bring up health care or animals. Mm. And um, to that, that's the reason why there's always been friction between us since that day, and that's the last time she was chair, and never to bring him up while she was chair. So um, I'm fighting for the underdogs. I fight for health care. I fight for the homeless, and oh yeah, underdogs, I get it. <laughs> and, and the animals, and I'm, I'm fighting for the people that are asking me this. Six lousy million dollars I'm gonna ask when we're getting a nice library, we're getting North <coughs> County rocking and rolling, we're taking an $80 million line of credit. Scott Hope says that he feels that we need the shelter. He did lower the price from eight million to six million. Charlie Bishop has told me that he thinks that, that we need it, but you know he's the deputy director, but he's told me that for a long time now. We have the money, it's a philosophy thing. So to say that we're wasting money is not true, it's a philosophy thing by this board. Are you, are you done? <coughs> I, I, I know, everybody's hitting it now. I it's I was like, already on. I'm okay. She took you all up. Up. I'm next on the board. And, and I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to say one thing. I'm not going to say what I actually hit my button to say. <laughs> Being chairman of this board does <laughs> not give that person the authority to ever tell a commissioner what they can talk about or not talk about. That's why I keep coming so, up. So, <laughs> you know, I, I find some of the comments that you have made, Truthful. particularly about me, to be very sad. I mean, you've called me a criminal up here on the dais twice. Yes. Now I'm telling you what to bring up and not to bring up on the dais. I mean, Commissioner Whitmore, please. I'm just trying to do my job here. I don't try to give you a hard time. Maybe I don't agree with some things. That's my right. But you know what? I'm only one vote. Mm -hmm. You've got several others. So please, leave me alone. That being said, Commissioner Cruz, you're next. I just want to make sure we're all aware of something oh. here on this animal shelter, which apparently we're talking about now. <laughs> um, there is no $6 million. We, we keep saying $6 million, and you just said, well, we did a favor by lowering it from eight. To no, you didn't. Chair. No, well, let me finish. Yeah. It was $8 million of money taken away from parks a couple of years ago to build a shelter. Four of that in our last CIP was designated to do the renovations for Bishop. We, we moved $8 million over. It was one because when this board first passed the sales tax, it was $1 million that the voters voted on to renovate the existing shelter. I agree the existing shelter is terrible. You're the ones who all voted to renovate it for a million dollars. I was not on the board at the time. Then you came back and said, you know what? Not everyone likes playing pickleball. Let's take more money from parks and build a new animal shelter. That's before Bishop was a glimmer in our eye. 
Now we have Bishop, and during the last CIP, we said we need four million dollars to renovate the other two buildings and the sewage and the plumbing and all this other stuff. And we took four million dollars of this eight million dollars. That leaves four million dollars. Huh. Well, then tell me where the four million dollars came from, because that. then I missed something on that. That we need uh, to go all the way back to that meeting because. And, yeah, she's. I've never heard four million ever. Jan has it either, I guess. Yeah, two million was contributions. Understood. Two of the ten. Two of the ten. Leaving so eight. Eight. Where is the money coming from to renovate Bishop if that ever happens eventually? That's where it came from. Bishop. Oh, that's was, what I just said, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I just said. That the money to renovate Bishop, which was estimated at four million dollars during our CAP, was coming from the eight million dollars that was originally for Charlotte, leaving four million dollars. So six million is a made up number that just factually does not exist anywhere on paper. That's leaving us $4 million. That's all I wanted to say was that that's an incorrect figure. So I don't know what you can you think you can build for $4 million. It's but in our budget, George. It says $6 million. I saw it. Yeah. yeah, because two of it was coming from <laughs> Pam, who walked away with her money. No. Yeah, oh, yes, oh, it is. You know what? Jan. It doesn't matter where it Jan, from. Okay, Jan, why don't you tell me? bringing it to me. I'm positive. I don't have my computer. Because <sighs> I questioned it. No, you did give it to me. I don't expect any anything from it. Okay, so um, the way it stands right now, you have six million going in the new animal service shelter. Okay. And then you have going to Bishop four million. So, so six plus four is Carol. No, no, no. But ten. It was only eight million in that budget. You can't spend ten million dollars out of an eight million dollar budget. Contributions. I know this is, is government. Two. Two. Okay, contributions is two. Contributions is two. Of the six. And then the infrastructure sales tax went to 3.9, and it's 6 million for the new animal services. And 4 million was the bishop. We moved to bishop. Okay, so we had eight, and we moved four. four. That left us four, and then there was a contribution of two that would add up to the six. Yes, sir. But the contribution is not in our bank account, correct? Because it literally didn't exist. No, it is planned. That this is the plan CIP, so okay. nobody's told so, me to so, unplan So it. us spending that four to fully honor what we agreed to do, nobody's changing the rules here, to fully honor what we supposedly said we would do, to spend that four, it's contingent upon a $2 million contribution from outside sources. So until that $2 million materializes, we're not technically doing anything out of what we already promised because part of our promise was contingent upon a $2 million donation. Big a million. I'll raise it. Yes. Okay. okay. I didn't know that. Where did the four million come to do Bishop? I never heard. I always heard it was like two. No. It's, it's always it's been four. four. It's okay. in your it's in your um, proposed CIP. Okay. And it's at four. And then uh, Commissioner Commissioner Cruz is correct. Then two is left inside of the new animal shelter. To raise. And then you have actually you've already got a hundred thousand in there that's been appropriated there's 3.9 of the infrastructure sales tax left to go so that's right it went eight and eight four it was eight went four and four mm -hmm. and then you got two more going over this way to the contribution i'm, I'm just going to ask a question since everybody else seems to think they can do the same originally i was on the board mm -hmm. She's i'm trying to help you here originally and maybe you answered this and I, min I missed it somehow because it's like a lot happening right now. Originally, there were millions of dollars taken away from parks. So... How much was it? I don't Do you know recall? The I don't recall the exact number. They changed the percentage. <laughs> I remember. Okay. Listen to her. Okay. It was $8 million. Okay. Mm. They changed the percentage and it changed it from parks to go to public safety and that went to this. To the, to the animal shelter. And, and it's it because Charlie couldn't spend it, correct? <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> well, that's what if I you heard. give Charlie a billion oh, dollars, he will spend yeah, it. Don't bring him up week. because I told him oh. he didn't have to be here tonight. So, yeah. Oh, I heard, can yeah. you tell a deputy county administrator that? Oh. A different Charlie. Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. <laughs> the director. Wait, I, I, was, Charlie. I was still on the board. Different Charlie. Charlie's Parks. Hold, 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 hold on. Are you I, not done? I was still on the board. Sorry, go ahead. All I was going to say was it's four million, it's not six. And this discussion in and of itself is premature. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't care if you want to leave it on the CIP and kick it out to 2025 for future discussion, but until we have Bishop and know what we need, we're not going to just blow $4 million or $6 million or $2 million building something 
just on a, a guess. And once we start building it, we're going to incur the design work and the costs associated with it. So, you know, I, I think this is a premature conversation that just needs to be pushed. It's not like we need this $4 million, like we're, we're trying to plug a hole right now. Kick it down the road three to five years, see what happens with Bishop, and then have this discussion presumably with somewhat of a different board because we we don't need to build it. We don't need to build it tomorrow. Well, because the original CIP showed half that money in fiscal year 2022. The, half of that $4 million was being spent this coming year, and that was my fundamental problem with it, was starting to build a brand new animal shelter before we even know what Bishop is or is not getting us. That was my problem with this. So I just want it kicked down the road more than I want it taken off at this point in time. Commissioner Satcher. No, I'm sorry. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, then Commissioner ahead, Satcher. Chair. I took him off. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, we started out talking about EMS stations, um, but now we've we've swung into a more emotional topic, obviously. Um, and so I would just ask my colleagues to, you know, try to stay focused on the, you know, the pragmatism of the issue and, and try not to allow your emotion to get you carried away and try and keep the, the back and forth. Oh. <laughs> Commissioner Wimbor, try and keep the back and forth uh, as limited as possible. Just try to stay on subject, please. So on the subject of the animal shelter, <laughs> we had... <laughs> <laughs> Can we please hurry up and get the public the comment? That, that is the subject at hand. I'm going to discuss it. Um, <laughs> But I'm just, I'm just asking you to, you know, to stop the bickering and the back and forth, the personal stuff. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, this is not personal by any means. No, um, it's not. You know, the bishop is coming to my district. I'm happy, so that's that, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but we had, we have an incredibly generous and unexpected gift from the Bishop Foundation. It's a nine million dollar animal shelter. And when I was campaigning and and when I was elected, that was the goal uh, of Commissioner Whitmore and her supporters was to achieve a, a ten million dollar animal shelter. And um, we will we will have that very soon. But you know, as soon as and, and listen, we're all eager to get the bishop online. Everyone up here uh, has spoken to that effect. Everybody supports it, and every, every you know, unanimous support for this. But as soon as the news of the nine million dollar facility gift went public, immediately the goalposts were moved, and right away we needed two of those shelters. Double the building costs, double the staffing costs, double the maintenance. And, you know, all this while Honor is building a massive new facility out east. Nate's Animal Shelter is not that old. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And as the county grows, these facilities add to our capacity to shelter animals in this county. Um, so as, as far as the capacity argument goes, there has been a lot of capacity added, a lot of it by the private sector, but capacity has been added uh, and is still being added. Um, so as Commissioner Satcher stated, there, I like the idea of a, of a retail space serving as an adoption center in addition to the bishop. Um, and I actually like the idea of it. I think it will boost adoptions. <clears throat> and I'm okay with it being in Parish, to be honest. I'm, I know he's you know, self-interested there, but that's okay. I think it makes sense. Parish is a hub for young families. Unfortunately, a lot of young families are, are leaving West Bradenton and, and they're moving out to Parish. Mm -hmm. um, I discourage this, but uh, it is happening. Um, <laughs> And I think it's a lot of potential to boost adoptions out there. And of course, if we can boost adoptions, uh, you know, that means we need less capacity. So that's that's a win-win. Um, and I'm very supportive of our animal services department. Um, and I want to ensure, while I'm supportive of them, that and I'm supportive of EMS, but I want to ensure that the money is being spent correctly. And I want to ensure that, as you, all of you do, that we are being good stewards of taxpayer dollars. So I just want to clarify where I am on this. Well said. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make a point to the board as we move forward. Um, I think that if we're going to do the job that we have the capability of doing, we are going to have to have a different mindset, I believe. Um, because if conflict is to be avoided and we can't handle it and it's we look, you know, we don't want to look mean, then how are we going to uh, collaborate to set policy? Because we're literally not allowed to talk about it behind the scenes. So I think that you know when someone brings something up, 
instead of jumping down and talking about how unreasonable and way out of bounds and your way off that is, we should consider it and just say, I disagree with that because ABC, and move on. With the animal shelter here, I don't know if you all realize what happened, but my original proposal was I would much rather, and I had used the, word, the number six because that's the number I'd seen in the budget. I said, I would rather see two million per year than six this year, and we could set the two million. And I was basically going to let you guys decide if you'd rather save it up till it's six and then build a facility or two million a year for something like, you know, the nice uh, things they have like on the north side of Lakewood Ranch Boulevard where the gymnastics places are, you know, one of those big nice places, which has been discussed here before. I was not trying to, uh, I don't think that should be a full hand grenade. <laughs> I don't think that that should be that controversial. We can disagree and just say, no, I think it's, we've waited long enough, we should do six. And then someone says, I think we should do zero and then see where the votes come out um, you know, but we don't have to put each other down for having a different way of looking at it. Um, so anyway, that, that's, that's the main point I wanted to make, I guess. Um, and, and let me just say, if we're going to set the policy, which is our only job, then we will have to have uncomfortable conversations in front of everyone. And it might not be fun. Or, I mean, we can go, you know, d directly to the county administrator, which, you know, uh, Dr. Hopes has done a great job when I've come to, to, with, to him with things behind the scenes. Just amazing at, at getting problems solved. And, uh, and so I'm happy with that, but we can do that. But if it's something there, it's gonna take four votes to change a policy, then I don't know of any other way other than to talk about it right here. And uh, so I think that we should try to respect each other enough to say, if he brings up and says that's half a million dollars, when I've had email after email after email saying that any of my proposals are wasting or, or putting county money at risk or wasting county time or how dare I propose something that might cost a little county money. And, uh, and then I bring up something half a million and <coughs> oh, that's absolutely nothing. The other uh, thing that I want to say is um, as we move forward, you know, this is budget <coughs> one of two for this exact board. And, uh, you know, anyway, as I move forward in my term, I'm going to see, I want to see more maybe we can't adopt full-on zero-based budgeting, but I do feel like each expenditure, they need to come and say, this is why this is gonna cost extra. This, is, this does seem unreasonable to spend this much on a library. It may sticker shock, right? And the, the people at home see these numbers, and it seems overwhelming to them, I would think. So I feel like those, those things need to be explained from the ground up. You know, we could spend nothing on and if any project I say, I'm a horrible guy, right? We could spend nothing on a library or nothing on a park or nothing, or we could spend 30 million and then, okay, justify where's the biggest bang for the buck for the taxpayer because that's what we do with our own budget at home is we see, okay, where can I get the most um, out of my money? And so I think we need to do that um, you know, as a county and I think it would be good for us as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll take anything besides nothing. So thank you. I, you know, it is very emotional because I don't know why, but it always is um, with the animal shelters. But, um, you know, we're not going to, even if we start, we're not going to have, we're not going to be ready to spend all this money right away. So, you know, I mean, we shouldn't even be talking, but I mean, 2.5 a year until we get enough. And, and I don't even know if those people will still contribute anymore because it was 10 million, they were gonna give 2 million and then we'd only have to come up with 8 million. And then they just got very discouraged. And I really haven't spoken to Pam since because I, and I don't know if she's given it back yet, but the reason why she hasn't, she, I mean, she wanted to hear something firm because you can't ask for $100,000 from somebody on a maybe. You know, and that's been the problem. But if we could at least set some kind of policy, then in the next two years we'll build a shelter because we don't know what it's going to be yet. I 100% agree. When I'm asking this for money, it's going to be, 
at least two years or two and a half years before it gets built. And everybody knows that. And I thought you all knew it. But um, Charlie's but, uh, reserves at that time, and I'm the only one up here, I think, that recalls it. I think it was like, I'm thinking like 18 million in reserves. And, and this was with the IST. It, he had no plan where he was going to spend it, and Ed moved it over to public safety so we could get going because we had groups that were going to contribute money. That's how it happened. I know some are shaking their heads no, but I'm positive, and, and our deputy administrator is shaking her head yes, so I know I'm correct. Um, but let's, I think we need to move on with the budget. We don't need to be here all night. But I am going to ask you to please not remove it completely and see what Scott, kind of what Satcher recommended see what Scott comes back to us at our next meeting on how we could get at least four votes to go that far. Because um, we don't know what's going to happen at Bishop yet, and, um, you know, we got to find out. And there, hopefully that will be happening soon. And if that doesn't happen, then look what we got. We had to spend uh, money, um, Commissioner Cruz, because our air conditioning went out. We couldn't even, FPL wouldn't let us put another, we had needed to get a wash machine. We couldn't plug it in the grid anymore. So that, I think, cost $400,000, right, just to do FPL? I think that's right. It was something like $400,000 because it was maxed to the hilt. And that's the only reason we had to spend that money. I can't do that. So anyway, I'm ready to move on with the budget, and hopefully you will reconsider by the next meeting to at least keep it in the budget. All right. We're going to take a 10-minute recess.
And I'm going to continue with Commissioner comments. Commissioner Servia, you're on the board, ma'am. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Madam Chairman. Um, so just a couple of comments. I've been listening to all of you. Great discussion. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to say that I, I know this budget system is, is a lot of work. It's been a very thoughtful and um, arduous process that our county administrator has gone through. Um, and I think that we're all, you know, trying to do the same things, and that is to be focused on what uh, the long-term needs are, as well as our short-term needs, and make these impactful decisions for the community um, for the best for everyone. So um, I've heard, you know, the concerns raised tonight. I would be in favor of bringing more information back on the animal shelter, the deputy director position, the EMS stations. Um, and, you know, let's just have that detailed information that we need in order to decide what we're going to do with those areas. Uh, but tonight, I think it's important to support the county administrator's budget, come back with more information on those issues, and then be ready to make a decision on those things we still have questions on. I did want to um, say one thing to correct the record a little bit. So um, we did not, in the past, we did not take money from the parks budget for that new animal shelter out east uh, remember that the infrastructure sales tax had different categories and the category that the money for the shelter was pulled from was a category and i don't have it in front of me but it said something like parks and other community needs and assets something like that so it was not that we were taking away from pickleball courts to build an animal shelter the money that was allocated for the animal shelter was within the guidelines of what was promised to the public for the IST. Um, so that's all I have. I, I'm anxious to hear from the public also. Thank you. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, you know, Commissioner Servia made some good, some good points and comments. Um, the administrator has brought us really a fantastic budget. I mean, he, he listened to all of our concerns and, and all of our wants and needs as individual commissioners, put those together and brought them to us. Uh, the big debate here is about an animal shelter, which was approved by a previous Board of County Commissioners that was not added into the budget by the administrator. And the other things we haven't even rejected, we've simply asked for more information on. Um, so they may or may not be, be justified in the end. Um, so am I to understand that essentially <clears throat> what we're doing here tonight is we've decided that we're going to come back at our next meeting and hear more information on the, the deputy director position and the EMS stations or, or sooner perhaps. Um, and then at, so the next government at the next, uh, budget meeting is when we will make a final decision on those and the animal shelter is that what i'm understanding or does that decision need to come now me to answer. Oh, I can i'm answer. asking either of, of uh, Dep either dr hopes or deputy administrator I'm uh, sure. okay um tonight you're going to hopefully make a motion to approve the tentative <laughs> millage okay and tentative budget adoption Okay. So that we can be in compliance with the statutes and rules of levying the taxes. Um, as you do regularly, you, you will then have a final hearing next, a final public hearing next week on the budget, and you'll adopt the, it's still a tentative. It would be final. At the, fi the final budget. Okay. Uh, and then the <coughs> expectation is that once that's done and the, uh, the, the, the tax bills are approved to go out for November, we'll come back in October, the first meeting in October, <coughs> with whatever budget amendments uh, you decide you want to make uh, next week, and we'll move forward as you have done in the years past and okay. every month and every meeting we'll continue to amend that budget as we move forward okay so we we're we're going to adopt it tentatively tonight we'll get more information and then we can make amendments either at the next budget meeting or really at any bocc meeting from this point on we can make those we can make those changes okay um that clarifies things for me i i will put out there just in 
all transparency, let everyone know um, that I am not in favor of spending 20 million taxpayer dollars on a library. And so all of you are aware, I am going to be bringing a motion forward to amend the budget um, on that. And I'm, I'm open for discussion. Uh, it won't, originally, it was, I believe, a $7 million library that was promised. And if that's the case, um, I feel that you build the library to meet your budget. I, I don't feel that you build your budget to, to meet the library that you've des, you know, designed. Um, so I want Lakewood Ranch to have a library. I want them to have the $7 million library they're originally promised, um, not what has you know, ballooned into a Taj Mahal of a library. You like that word, I know. Uh, <laughs> I'll never live that down. No. Nope. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I don't support a $20 million library, but so Lakewood Ranch is clear. I do support building them the original $7 million library they were promised. So, and, and that is all. Thank yeah. you, Madam Chair. Now I'm going to have to comment, uh, well, but sorry. only for a quick minute. I totally agree with Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. In fact, I said the last time that this library came up that I was not in favor of a 15 or a $20 million library. It was ridiculous. And the problem came in, it was like $7 million. Is that correct, Jan, at first? Sounds about right. But what happened was they kept changing, changing, changing. And I say the, it wasn't the Board of County Commissioners. We didn't see anything. Um, and it kept getting changed and kept getting changed. Well, because of, the, of all the changes that were taking place, it was right at the time when all of the uh, building supplies were also going up okay. and it was costing more. So that's where the majority of it came. And then I heard 15 million and then it, from there, now we have a chiller plan. I don't even know where that came from. So I have asked a couple of times, just so this board's aware, and, and I know that uh, the county administrator, we've talked about it several times, um, you know, and I've asked him to bring forward the situation, what is going on with our library, where are we, and how much longer before we are ready to go ahead. And, and I will tell you that I even had a conversation a couple of days ago um, with Willis Smith. I called them and I said, you know, when can we possibly start moving forward? So they're kind of like I was. I mean, they feel the same way. It, it, you know, we're waiting. We're in a waiting mode and we need to stop it and start moving forward with something that's reasonable because we do need the library, but I mean it just seems like it's getting out of hand. Um, I don't have any other uh, commissioners on the board, so we're going to now finally move to um, public comment. Now, this public comment, this is not on future agenda items. This is strictly on the budget, and that's how this meeting was advertised. So I have a few. First one is Mike Meehan. You'd come forward, sir. State your name. Three minutes. You'll have three minutes. One second. Next is Al Miller. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Point of order. Um, I'm just going to request that, you know, really from this point on in our meetings that we stick to the three-minute uh, timeline. Okay. For, for all speakers. Thank you. I don't have an issue with that at all. How about the other members while we're waiting? Everybody okay with that three minutes? A long time ago. Yeah, what we did, what I think what Commissioner Van Oster is, is for us to be consistent so we don't put ourselves in a difficult situation. And I, I'm in support of that. I don't have a problem with it. It's according to our rules and regulations, we have had exceptions to it. But I don't mind holding it to three minutes if that's what this board would rather have. Yes, sir, you'll have three minutes. State your name, sir. Mike Mann, Manatee County citizen. <clears throat> At the end of the day, the budgets for the last several years have not met their end point, end point which is that governmental revenues <coughs> should equal governmental expense. The spate of recent $100 million surpluses, including a $200 million surplus for the current fiscal year to date, proves this point. The recent millage cut and expanded capital spending for the next five years are an attempt to reduce the surplus, but do they go far enough? An $8 million millage cut is a good start, but still seems inadequate to me, given the $100 million of federal and state grants that have come in this year and $625 million of unrestricted cash on our balance sheet. Similarly, a CIP, which is expanding from a $100 million average of the last several years to two to $400 million per year for the next five years, seems wholly unrealistic given the reappearance of Delta COVID and the well-publicized labor shortages across the country. 
enter the variable surplus tax credit as an immediate potential solution. It can be utilized or not utilized at all and vary based on the size of the annual surplus. For example, a 50% surplus tax credit based on a fiscal 2020 surplus of 132.6 million would equal 66.3 million and amount to approximately 24% of 2021 property tax collection. A sizable injection to Manatee County's economy and a welcome financial relief for our COVID beleaguered citizens. It would also show the commission is serious about moving toward compliance with Florida statute 12001C1 and C2. Similarly, a December billing holiday for sewer and water would offset the recently enacted $2.40 monthly billing increase and is easily affordable given the $325.9 million of unrestricted cash currently residing on the sewer and water's balance sheet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meehan. Al Miller. We're going to give you the mic, Mr. Miller. We're going to hand you the mic. Thank you. My name is Al Miller, and I'm here. I feel like I don't even need to be here now after talking about $2, two billion uh, at an overall budget for this county. Um, my problem is, uh, you know, I, I, every year I get these property tax forms, and I've tried to understand them forever. Uh, I'm, I'm a mathematician, a structural engineer by degree, and, and, and most years it just looks like a lot of creative math, a lot of creative math. I have a two-page thing that I think some of you have, and it illustrates on the second page, uh, uh, it shows a column six and a column eight I took out of the tax uh, guide that we got this year. And I was illustrating over the years what it's been. And uh, in, in uh, 2019, it, of course, it was 602. And then it moved up to 632. And then in 21, it, it moved up $200 more, 836. From 632 to 836. I'm on a fixed income. Uh, these kind of steps, I have to quit doing other things. You know, I, I, I drive less than 50, 50 miles a week because I can't afford to go anywhere because of my, my fixed income. Um, so what I've done is shown uh, what it was last year and then in column three, uh, what the taxes uh, were, were shown there. So it's, it's taken off of this original form, you know, the tax form for uh, right. Manatee County. And the first page, I, I showed uh, where I've done taxes since 2011. That's when I bought the house and moved in from Indiana. Uh, and, of course, I've got one area highlighted. It, it was this year... Um, the value of the home. And it went from 99 to 129 to 141 to 162. All that in four years. Unbelievable jumps in property value. And not one of those years could I sell my house for anywhere near that amount. And when I, when I bought the house, the, the tax value was 1351. I bought the house for 60, okay? And I, I had come in here with a booklet and illustrated, you know, how, how off that was. So the, the creative math, I mean, especially in 2016, it showed a difference uh, of 16,000, and then it jumped up in 2017 Mr. Miller, to they've 30. given me a three-minute limit. All right. I'm sorry, sir. But well, thank you for talking. Right. And Thanks, Mr. Miller. Um, thank you, Mr. Miller. Marsha Weichel? Weichel. 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 Like Michael with a W. Michael. Okay. Michael. Michael Weichel. Got it. Thank you. My name is Marsha Weichel. I live in West Bradenton, District 3. 
Um, I am a master naturalist, and I was part of the citizens committee that put the referendum for land acquisition on the ballot. I am concerned about the plan to delay the adding the 0.15 millage to our property taxes until 2023. My concern is that while I have heard assurances that five million from the general fund will be made available for land acquisition this fiscal year, the general fund is where you go as commissioners for any emergency that might happen, such as, heaven forbid, a global pandemic. While I'm merely an individual managing my personal household budget for 50 years now, I know how priorities can change in 30 days, much less six months or a year. Imagine how many pulls on that money there can be in a county of half a million people. And this five million has none of the caveats from the language in the referendum tied to it. After this board was elected in November, I asked our representative from Trust for Public Lands if any municipality has ever not implemented a program following passage of a referendum, especially one with such an overwhelming margin. He said no. They are elected officials, and going against such a popular referendum would likely be political suicide. But here we are. I am concerned that your strategy is more for self-aggrandizement than for the public good. Perhaps you are counting on the energy generated by our educational campaign for the referendum and the overwhelming passage of the referendum to dissipate over the next year, giving you free reign to do what you, who have very publicly proclaimed you did not vote for the millage increase, what you would personally rather do. I don't like playing the skeptic. I prefer a system which is transparent to the public and where our elected officials are accountable to the voters. I fear that you may be accountable, but only to a favored few have, who have either bought your seats or who represent only a fraction of your constituency. Ms. Brewer's explanation sounds good. I'm sorry, but for nearly 15 years, the commission operated on the very same or similar premise, and almost no land was purchased. The purpose of the millage proposed and voted on in the referendum was to create a dedicated fund. I am hopeful, but on the other hand, I am very concerned about the sleight of hand that I see here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Net, I have uh, Lucas Levine, but it's about the Texas abortion law adoption comment, and that is not about our budget. Is there anything else, sir, if you're here, that you'd like to speak on re in reference to this budget? Okay. okay. If you could come forward and state your name, you'll have three minutes, sir. Thank you. My name is Lucas Levine. I live in East Manatee. Um, and before I make the main comment that I'm standing up here for, I'm surprised looking at the budget here on the board uh, that the impact fees aren't higher uh, given the housing market, the incredible housing market that we have now. I understand that most of you up here probably get substantial campaign donations from builders, and I'm sure some of you will say the buyers end up paying the higher costs, uh, but the reality is, is that this is a buyer's market and we should be collecting as much as possible given the massive need for infrastructure, schools, and other priorities. I'm sure you took down uh, the impact fees during the economic downturn. They should be at the highest they could possibly be right now, and there's no excuse. <clears throat> also, uh, this is the first time I've ever attended one of these meetings, and I'm actually really surprised by the tone and demeanor between the commissioners. It's actually a bit embarrassing. Madam Chair, so the tone of the commissioners is not regarding the budget. We don't, we're not, we're not the school system, and impact fees are not part of this budget discussion either. So this uh, you had impact is not fees. on subject at all. Have impact and his card was in reference to abortion law. Well, we, he's at the podium, so, so please keep it to the budget. I'll keep sir, it really quick, would. but my, Thank I mean. You. This is going to have to do with budget because clearly there are comments made by commissioners up here about other ideas that they have. So this is uh, to the heart of that. My comment is really directed at Commissioner Satcher and his continued effort to enact similar bill to the Texas Heartbeat Act. Okay, that County. is We're not part of this discussion, sir, and you know that. So please work with us here and follow, follow the rules, please. 
That's not for today's discussion. You can come back another day. But I appreciate your support. Well, you don't have my support, so. Okay. But, but the reality is, is that I never get a chance to come up here. Lucas, that cannot so, be discussed tonight. I'm sorry. Well, regardless, I, uh, I think that uh, the conversation also that you guys are having with regards to the animal shelter. Um, there you go. Sound, well, sounds like a must. Uh, and this county definitely has the money to support an animal shelter. And for the things that you guys are talking about separately that you want to enact, uh, I think that this is a no-brainer um, and it should be supported. But it's really difficult for working people to come to these meetings. And so it's a shame that I can't make my comment, even though it's really quick. OK. Mr. We appreciate you being here with us. Thank you. Public hearing just for budget. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Please, please do. We hope you can come back and see us. Can I? Uh, no. I won't say anything. Um, no. Mary Lynn Parker. I apologize for being snarky. Um, we're still under public comment. I'm not. Sorry. Mary Lynn Parker and then Ken Piper. I'm Mary Lynn Parker and I'm speaking on behalf of Suncoast Waterkeepers tonight. Last November, 71.34% of Manatee County voters agreed to increase property tax by 0.15 mil and authorize purchasing up to 50 million bonds to acquire, improve, and manage land to protect drinking water sources and water quality, preserve fish and wildlife habitat, and prevent stormwater runoff pollution and provide parks. In your desire to reduce millage by 0.20, you are agreeing to a strategy that ignores the voters' mandated rise in millage of 0.15 for water and land. You must act now to collect the citizen voted increase for water and land. Your trustworthiness as a board is at stake. This strategy of ignoring the citizens' vote for 2022 is built on the false assumption that the, math, the water and land tax doesn't need to be collected until there's a list of appropriate properties of willing sellers for you to consider, and that is not true. The one-year solution offered by the budget <coughs> office of using surplus funds and stabilization, stabilization funds if needed to buy bonds to purchase land is short-sighted. Surplus funds could be could go to address a myriad of issues for which there are no designated funding. The water and land <coughs> millage should be levied for 2022. To the question posed to the voters in 2022, the majority of voters in every one of your districts voted to save water and land. In District 1, 67.65% .65 of Mr. <laughs> Satcher's constituents voted yes, and that's more than those who voted for him into office. In District 2, 72.58% of Mr. Bellamy's constituents said yes. In District 3, 74.70% of Mr. Van Osternbridge's constituents voted yes to water and land, while he won only 58.7% of the district's votes. In District 4, 74.89% <laughs> of Ms. Servia's constituents voted yes, and in District 5, 71.81% of Mrs. Baugh's constituents voted yes. Okay. Countywide, 71.34% voted yes. You must act now to protect Manatee County's last remaining natural areas before they are lost forever to development. Despite the pandemic, the pace of growth and development continues unabated. You cannot delay setting in motion the will of the voters to protect our county's water resources and wildlife habitat so future generations can enjoy them the way you do. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Piper, you'll have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Ken Piper, Manatee County resident. This is one of the best sessions I've ever been to at one of these <laughs> meetings, and it is definitely the best budget session. Um, I'd like to address myself to the percentages that, that we keep coming up with 
as far as reserves. There's the 20% reserve, the 10% contingency reserve, and the 5%. I never have been able to figure out what the 5% is. And we're told that all of these are mandatory reserves. Uh, from my reading of the statutes, that is not true. The 20% reserve is in Florida Statute 129.01. And the 20% only applies to the carryover from year to year. It is not a separate fund of any kind, and I think we need to stop abusing the, the taxpayers with that 20%. Uh, the 5% is in uh, two sections, 129.012B and 200.0652A1. Uh, um, the statute provides that in setting the millage, we have to use at least 95%. But that doesn't mean that we have to set aside uh, 5%. We can go all the way up to uh, the 100%, and I definitely think we should do that in regards to that one. Uh, the budget adjustment uh, is referred to in the statute as a contingency. That can be a maximum amount of 10% according to uh, uh, Florida Statute 129.012C1. Um, a, a reserve for contingencies may be provided, but it does not have to be provided. And again, I think we ought to start cutting back on that one. Um, I, have, I have a couple of questions, actually, regarding the whole budget process. In uh, Statute uh, 200.065, there's three methods <laughs> of, of setting uh, the budget, and it all goes back to the rollback. Uh, one method requires um, a, a majority vote of this board, another one requires two-thirds, and the third method uh, requires a uh, 100% uh, uh, vote from you. So, you know, I haven't seen anything as far as what the rollback is, and uh, from my understanding is that's the point that we have to start with. In other words, we don't get all the department heads together and then uh, they come up with a budget. It goes, it goes back to the rollback, and I guess I'd like to see an explanation of that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to come forward and speak on the budget? Anyone on the phone? Say it again. Yes, Madam Chair, we have seven go. callers. First is 445, 445, press star six. Well, Jim Lena, for the record, the budget, let's talk about the budget. So we, we spent almost an hour on the animal shelters. I didn't hear one, one thin dime about the 15 or 10 million bucks we need for the jail. Not one word in two hours was okay. said about you hear what you're saying. Dale, Glenn, Glenn, you need to speak up. We're having trouble hearing you, sir. You don't need to wear a mask here on the phone. <laughs> Hello. Keep Front. going. Go Keep ahead. Loud. So, so, yeah, so I haven't heard anything about the, the veterans. The budget, I have an issue with the budget because there's several hundred thousand dollars short because of the shenanigans the REO department plays with. Uh, Community Solutions 360. I wrote a couple of commissioners a, a, a letter this morning that I just got back from my public records request. Dr. Hope, three months ago I went to you, I said, please look into this. All you had to do was go down and walk down to Jerry's office and say, did you sign off on these mortgages? And they never got paid back. But I never got that answer from, from the administration or any of the staff. So I'm really upset about that. I think you need to do an absolute freeze on all the home funds, any funds that Jerry Lopez controls, and we need a forensic audit on that whole department because there's several hundred thousand dollars. And here's what they do. They get the money. They don't pay it back. Not only that, they get a mortgage from the person they're selling it, and then they keep the money. How, how, how crazy is that? Not only give them zero interest-free loans, I don't even know why you put that in since they never pay it back anyways. I don't know why you put a 12% cap on administration because they keep it all anyways. This is criminal. I, you know, I demand a forensic audit, and that's the way it should be. I mean, I, I just, I'm so livid about this, about the funds not getting paid back and the shenanigans and the, the, 
how we hide the funds. Three months, a couple, three records requests. Very new she signed up. Simple question. See, but transparency and accountability is what's lacking with that department. So, you know, you, 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 you escort. Thanks, I hope you forgot to go. That whole department, those funds need to be frozen, and we need a forensic audit. And don't trust those people with one cent of taxpayer or government money. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else on the phone? Yes, Madam Chair. 294. 294, press star six. Yes, my name is Chris Gilbert. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Chris Gilbert, Manatee County. Um, kudos first to George and uh, Carol. I think that whenever budget time comes up, it's important to have a vision and invest in a vision that would, in a sustainable way, create a more livable and humane place to live. Uh, so thank you to both uh, of the big picture thinkers there today. Sustainability is not only financial, also environmental. The Environmental Land Initiative is urgent. The board has proposed in this budget to delay the funding, yet it also, through behind the scenes chatter, I guess you could call it, board controls the progress of forming the conservation plan, which you've seen is a necessary step. But there are already several projects that various community organizations have ready to go. And I hope that the community is aware that the board does control both the start and the pace and the scope of this project. A conservation land may compete unfairly with business plans of developers. I want people to be aware of that and to urge the board to begin buying conservation land this budget year. Um, Commissioner Ball very correctly and astutely insists that her work is to represent citizens. Well, voters set aside their own money to give themselves and their children a more verdant and sustainable future in this county. We should begin putting that money to use for the purpose they intended. There is some doubt on LMAC about the enthusiasm of, on the board for conservation and in general and the referendum in particular. And it's dismaying because a successful conservation plan could potentially heal all of your all's legacies as visionaries. So I have a couple of other comments about the budget as well. I don't know how much time I have. Just stop me when I'm done, when I run out. The drone program, we never heard any other information about that. Uh, parks funding. We're, I know that cash is king, right? That's, I'm an accountant, trained accountant, and that's uh, the basic principle. Why are we reducing parks funding when we are cash rich? Um, and finally, Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. <clears throat> that time? Yes, sir. You told us to let you know. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other phone calls? Yes, Madam Chair. We have caller 572. 572, press star 6. State your name for the record, please. Hi. My name is Bryce Claypool. I live in Manatee County, and I'm a founding member of Florida Kids for Clean Water. Our organization's goal is to protect and the beautiful natural places we love for future generations. Our first effort was on behalf of the Manatee County bond referendum. 50 kids, ages 4 to 15, signed a letter we sent to the paper asking adults to vote for a brighter future, and they did. Here is some of what we wrote. Why is this important to us kids? It is important because our future depends on adults protecting the resources we will need. 
If you don't protect land, our future is bleak. And because in 40 years we want to bring our kids here, we don't want to show them a dirty, polluted bay and land paved over, devoid of the beautiful forests and meadows that once covered it. We want to show them the wilderness. We want to show them the wondrous world of nature you adults have witnessed. And the adults listened. Your voters listened. Over 70% of voters in Manatee County approved the referendum to ensure us a future. It is urgent that the will of the people be implemented to help protect our beautiful county for generations to come. It is necessary that you do it this year as the pandemic has accelerated the rate at which natural lands are being lost. In my own neighborhood, I have watched vacant lot after vacant lot be built on. If we wait, there will soon be nothing left to preserve. Please do not delay. Do this to help Manatee County, to help keep Manatee County beautiful for generations. Next. Hey. Callers 285, 285, press <coughs> 285, state your name for the record. 285, star 6. State your name for the record, please. Hi, I'm sorry about that. This is actually Bryce's brother, so I just happened to get him right after him, so I'm trying to grab my notes. Um, my name is Allie Foster, and I'm the parent who has uh, been the support person for the Florida Kids for Clean Water this year. Uh, it's really um, the first time I've ever done anything like this when we started last fall. And watching these kids meet week after week on Zoom, they wrote letters, they did videos, they um, stepped out of their comfort zones in so many ways to ask adults of our community to help save land and water for Manatee County's future as their first act, and it was truly inspirational. And I have to say, I wondered at the time what I would say to these kids if voters didn't support the land and water referendum. But when it passed over with over 70% of the voters' support, we were so thrilled, um, delighted. And now, watching this year, this commission, this budgeting process, um, really I'm surprised that the commissioners, any of you commissioners, would delay collecting and fully funding such a strong mandate from your constituency on an extremely popular referendum. Um, especially watching the pace of development and a real estate insanity over the last year, just knowing the voters want us and the added urgency um, in this type of a market, it seems like they should be brought forward, not put on hold, making it more difficult and more expensive for the county to purchase and preserve the lands that we're not only asking for, but we are also willing to pay for it. These kids don't have a vote yet. Um, but they, it, it didn't stop them. They, they were willing to find their voices and to use them. But now it's up to us. It's up to us to hear them now, not next year, and to fund, fully fund this referendum, to collect the money and get started now. Because they're right. It's not something we should be pushing down the road for next year. I hear the plan to use some funds for this. But I urge you to act now and to implement the millage and to fund, fully fund the land and water referendum so the process begins sooner for selecting land and also opening up to your voters who trust you to listen to their values and to follow their vote. So thank you. Next we have caller 419, 419, press star six. Caller 419, press Hi, six. my name is Terry Bridge, and I'm a resident of Manatee County. Um, I've been listening to the comments this evening about the animal shelter. And um, most of the commissioners are probably familiar with my name because I've been, over the last few months, I have sent letters and made public comments. And most recently, I, I sent you a data analysis of why it is a uh, new um, animal shelter is needed for the county, even considering, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Bishop's addition. You have the money and you have the need. And I'm going to read the data that I have sent you. Looking at dogs alone, the Palmetto shelter has 80 kennels. 
but based on its pre-COVID uh, 2019 data, the Palmetto shuttle, um, Shelter took in an average of uh, estimated average of 141 dogs per month. In 2020, the number was 104 per month, and year to date, the number is 127 dogs per month. Clearly, too many dogs for only 80 kennels. Making matters worse, the average length of stay for a dog was recently estimated to be about two months. This chronic overcrowding at the Palmetto Shelter has too often resulted in doubling up of dogs in kennels and the use of crates. The question is, if the Palmetto Shelter is demolished, as has been suggested by some of you, and not replaced, will the acquisition of the Bishop SPCA facilities alleviate the county-run animal shelter overcrowding? The data say no. Why? Well, first, even though the Bishop SPA facility is planned to be refurbished to an approximate total of 124 kennels, that number will not accommodate all dogs taken in monthly by the Palmetto Shuttle Shelter. Second, nor will it accommodate the additional monthly average number of dogs Bishop SPCA has taken, been taking in. And third, it will not alleviate the length of stay impacts. If the Palmetto Shelter is to be demolished and nothing, re nothing built to replace it, looking at dogs alone, the county will be short kennels and overcrowding at county-run shelters will continue. This is why the $6 million should remain budgeted to replace the Palmetto Shelter. I've also recommended that, you keep, in addition to keeping the money in the budget, tax has the animal services people, they're experts in the delivery of animal shelter services. Have them prepare for you guys a strategic plan of how Bishop is going to be uh, incorporated into the delivery of animal services in Manatee County. And even with the Bishop being integrated, what are the remaining needs? And that will give you some type of a roadmap for what this, this, Thank this you, new animal shelter would, would we be. We appreciate Thank you here. calling. Do we have another caller? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Caller 780. 780, please press star six and state your name for the record, please. Caller 780. Good evening, commissioners. This is Dick Ackenrod, 40-year resident of Parrish. As you've heard tonight in the general election last November, 142,107 registered voters in Manatee County voted for bonds to finance the purchase of conservation lands more than 71% of those who cast ballots. I'm now to put in place the process through which conservation measure approved by your constituents will be implemented. It's also time to make sure that the funding necessary to acquire lands which meet the county's project selection criteria is in place for budget year 2022. Kudos to the board for striving to keep Manatee County an affordable place to live. But an important part of keeping Manatee County a livable community is preserving the natural beauty of our county, which helps distinguish it from other counties in the region. We know that the pace of development in Manatee County is not slowing. In spite of the pandemic, development is proceeding at a breakneck speed. The county Commission needs to put, a pla put in place now the process and funding through which remaining lands that provide the best possible wildlife habitat and park lands and the greatest protection of our water resources can be acquired. We need to be certain that funds are in place in the coming budget year to acquire qualified properties that might become available. Most of the items you're considering in next year's budget are for community services, the cost of which are provided to you by your staff, Citizens do not have the opportunity to vote for or against most of those services. But citizens did have the opportunity last November 3rd to vote for or against land and water conservation. Over 142,000 of them voted for issuing bonds to acquire conservation lands to sustain the quality of life in Manatee County. Collectively, they are willing to pay up to $50 million for it. Don't let those 
142,000 citizens who voted for land and water conservation down. Please make certain the dedicated funding is in place for the next budget year. Thank you for your time. Thank you for calling. We have caller 842. 842, press star 6, and state your name for the record, please. This is Lori Gurley. Um, I'm calling regarding the animal shelter issue. Can you hear me? Yes, Colin, Hello? we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I, I, I called to make a statement, but first I would like to make a comment, and this is in reference to... Commissioner Van Austin Bridges' comment. Um, with all due respect, when you state that Nate and Benderson and all of these East County uh, places are building shelters, they are not building open admission shelters for county animals. There's a big difference between a rescue and an open admission county shelter, okay? I certainly hope that we receive the Bishop property and shelter. It will certainly be a good addition for our animals. But I have to say, we have rescues in this county that are importing animals to this county. They're not taking our animals from the shelter because unfortunately there is a lot of dogs that they don't want. They want the fluffy designer dog. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, blame them for that. Okay. I will tell you this. I belong to an organization called Friends of Manatee County Animal Services. We are a nonprofit. Since April 22nd, we have transported 40 dogs from Manatee County to Northern Rescue. Okay? We have now gotten into the transport business. We are trying to get these animals out of the county, not in the county. But the big thing is, the big clarification that you have to keep in mind is all these East County facilities that you're talking about are not open admission shelters. They are rescues. And until they start taking some of our dogs, we have an overpopulation problem, and we are going to continue to see more and more animals come into our county shelter that the county cannot refuse to take to take by law. So please don't say that there are county or that there are shelters out east that are being built that are going to help us. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> thank you. Next caller. That's all we have. Thank all you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just spoke, if y'all would just humor me for a second, I just spoke to the county administrator about an email that he sent today. And I think under the circumstances of what we've heard from so many here in the public and on the phone, I asked him if I could read it because it's good information. Um, I'll just get right into it. The Environmental Land Acquisition Program is being funded in fiscal year 21-22 with excess reserves. Florida statutes cap county reserves at 20%. Manatee County has many accounts where those reserve caps are exceeded. So the proposed budget funds in environmental lands at 95% of what would be collected if the new tax started collection this year. By funding the first year this way, we also save on the tax collector fees. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the bond authorization allows for us to bond should a major purchase opportunity arise during this fiscal year. So to think that we're not funding it or we're ignoring the voters is not the case. We are taking money out of reserves. If anything, it saves the taxpayer, again, 
uh, a little bit of money with not having to pay that this year. So I just thought I would read that into record. Um, I have several commissioners. Did you have something to add to that, sir? Yes, ma'am, to add to that. Uh, and commissioners, uh, on your uh, work session schedule, you have a work session on October 27th on the environmental lands, the criteria recommendations for selection, targeted lands and projects, and budgets, proposed budgets for acquisition, improvements, and maintenance in accordance with the voters' desires. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir, for adding that. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore, you're next on the board. Um, to clarify, we start collecting the tax in 2023, right, Jan? So actually, we're not even going to start collecting it from our citizens till 2023, but we are putting money aside. Right. Correct. Correct. And that's important, and that's why I voted this way. I did vote for the tax. and um, But actually, we are not starting collecting from the citizens till 2023, correct? Okay. With that, I would like to start um, with, and I know you all want to talk, and that's fine, but can we do the motions? I would like to do the first motion because I don't think we're going to change. You can make it. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to move to adopt resolution B-22-001 for tentative millage rates for fiscal year 21-22. Second. Second. Oh, there she is. Ah, Serbia. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore, a second by Commissioner Satcher. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved unanimously. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to for the adoption of Resolution B-22-002, Budget for Manatee County. Move to adopt Resolution B-22-002, which adopts a tentative budget for FY21-22, which also includes the unincorporated municipal service taxing district units and the Palm Air Municipal Service Tax Unit. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Servia, a second by Commissioner Cruz. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, unanimously. Uh, Madam Chairman, I did not make the motion. It was made by Commissioner Whitmore. Okay. okay. Did I say we, Servia? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I am yeah. so sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt Resolution B-22-003, which adopts a tentative budget for FY21-22 for all identified Manatee County dependent special districts. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Whitmore, a second by Commissioner Satcher. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It's approved unanimously, Madam Clerk. And now the, somebody has to read. You do, right? If, 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 yes, if you don't mind, can I go ahead and get Please, that out of the way? Please, go ahead. Um, per the, the rules of the term process, I need to read these, these next two items. The first one is that the aggregate millage for the fiscal, fiscal year 2021-2022 is 6.8322 mills, and the change from the rollback aggregate millage rate of 6.6288 mills for the operating millage is hereby determined to be a positive 3.07% increase. In addition, the second public hearing will be held on September 14th in the Patricia M. Glass Chambers, 1112 Manatee Avenue West, Bradenton, which is here. And then I've only got one other thing. Yes, go. Okay. Um, well, I guess it'll be after commissioner comments, and then if you can sure. come back. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next is Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, there's just two quick comments relative to public comment. One, a couple people mentioned specific items. Uh, Glenn mentioned the jail with the homeless vets and... Chris mentioned the drone program. I believe it was Chris. Yeah. That, that wasn't the nature of this meeting. A few specific line items did come up, but we've had many, many budget meetings that went into the weeds and details line by line because we didn't mention literally everything we're going to spend every penny on does not mean that doesn't exist somewhere in this budget. This is a little higher macro level. Uh, second thing is the land thing, and I, I think Dr. Hope's kind of more or less summarize it, but we are collecting it. We're just not collecting it this year because we don't have the plan in place to use it this year. You know, for all of the terrible ways that was written, 
um, which is why we're way over collecting. You know, it, it wasn't worded properly, so for all the benefits people who really want that get by collecting way too much money, uh, it also didn't say when we had to start collecting it. So we're not not honoring the uh, the ballot initiative. We have every intention of doing it. We will be buying $50 million worth of property in some way, shape, or form, and I promise you will get to pay additional taxes for it. But you're just not paying additional taxes for it this year. <laughs> Uh, but we are putting the money aside. As you heard, we have the ability to close on land if land presents itself. But we don't want to collect funds before we know what to do with those funds. It's not fair to the citizens of Manatee County, the 71% that want the land and the 29% that don't. You know, So we're going through that process this year. It also, in all honesty, we have a new administration here. And this new administration is going to be creating efficiencies in our government. And those efficiencies are what's going to allow our millage to stay lower in future years. This is a short fuse of lowering the millage this year. We're using excess reserves we shouldn't be holding in the first place to cover this. And this is buying the cushion necessary to, to keep your taxes low while still honoring the commitment to purchase environmental <coughs> land in the future. Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Cruz articulated my point extremely well, and so I will forego my comments. Wow. Commissioner Satcher. I'll forego my comments as well. <laughs> no, actually, okay. <laughs> I think it might be less trouble if I go ahead and say, oh, um, uh, just after uh, hearing Commissioner some of the commissioners out, and then after uh, speaking offline with uh, Director Hopes, I'm probably not going to support uh, an amendment to change the funding plan on the um, on the shelter, on the dog shelter. So, um, so that's a swap for me. Change of position, not necessarily 100 percent, but that's kind of where I'm at at this point, and I just wanted to let that be known. Some promise, Mr. Okay. Uh, sure. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. We don't know what you mean. I just want to understand what you're saying better, Commissioner uh, Satcher. I had said I had said that I would do the that I was in favor of the two million per year, um, and I mean at this point I, I just feel like it's belaboring the point. Let's get it done. I'm, I'm okay with what we have presented. I'm not going to support, support an amendment. Milk. If the vote was right now, I would not support an amendment to change what's in the budget going towards the east shelter if the vote was right now. So. What did you promise? And Carol all? wasn't even uh, in the room for I am her. done. listening, I'll assure you. You I'm need done. to be, yeah. No, you don't, don't can't get any better than that, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm next on the board. Um, I would not, but that's... Um, I think it's interesting. But anyway, um, I just, you know, it, we, we've said here tonight, and we've heard a lot of people from the public come forward, uh, and, and the majority of it has been on the environmental lands. Uh, and it's sad because, you know, we never said we weren't doing anything this year. We never said that we weren't funding it. And I guess maybe we should have addressed that earlier and people would have understood. But um, at any rate... Uh, you know, it's been an interesting evening. So, commissioners, is there anything else uh, on the phone. that you would? Yes. On the phone. Up. Oh, Madam is it Chairman. Commissioner Servia? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. It's so hard to get noticed when you're way down here in Miami. <laughs> I can't imagine why that would be while you're in Miami. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, I just, I just have been writing notes throughout this whole dialogue, which has been. A Excellent, and um, you know, and you know, budgeting is is always an exercise of tough choices, right? So it's no surprise that there's a lot of discussion. Um, and I, what really resonated with me, uh, the member of the public who spoke, I think it was Mr. Miller, who uh, talked about his him being on a fixed income, and it's very difficult for him for the taxes continue to go up, and that's because property values are rising so fast in the area. And that really resonates with me, and I know it does with all of you as well, because we represent a lot of people on fixed incomes. Um, and to him, I just say that we are doing our job with you in mind. <laughs> we really are. I mean, we can't stop taxes because uh, we've got a lot we have to do 
for the people who live here, but we're certainly thinking of those people on fixed incomes. Uh, the environmental land tax, great discussion, uh, as we all know, overwhelmingly approved by the electorate. And I worked with the um, Florida Kids for Clean Water. What an impressive group of kids they are. And they're still involved even after the referendum passed. Um, so to them, I just want to say, um, we hear you. This is important to all of us. Um, it's not something that's disappearing. It's just we're taking the time to put together a process that will work very effectively for the people who are going to be taxed for this um, money. But it's on my weekly list of things I talk to our county administrator about. He knows that I'm always looking for, you know, where are we with it and what's the next step. It is an urgent matter because as we all know, the pace of development is so fast. Land is being gobbled up and we need to preserve land um, for the people who live here now and in the future. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna say is, you know, political passion is one thing as we all have that, but we have to remember that data drives decisions. So when we hear at the next meeting on some of these topics we've asked for more information on, I hope that there is a lot of data that's brought to us, um, but we, we can say what we love and what we like and what we've been promised and what we'd hope for in the past and in the future, but the decisions we make need to be made based on data. What is needed? What kind of money do we have? And how do we accomplish it? Um, and as for the East County Library, I also wanted to say, you know, I, I give a lot of deference to the district commissioner. Um, so I am listening to what she is saying. Um, nobody likes to spend $20 million on a library that was budgeted for $7 million. Um, but we all know the only reason that's happened is because the cost of materials and labor has skyrocketed so much. And it's not just with the library, it's with lots of other things. But, you know, I'm going to uh, look to our district commissioner to lead the way there. You know, what should we do with that library? So I am listening to you. And thank you all very much for letting me speak. Commissioner Servia, you know that we're hating you right now because you're in Miami. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. I know you're there on yeah. county business. Thank you. Um, all right. Anything else, commissioners, before we adjourn? Just Did Jan have Jan? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming back to you. That's okay. I just wanted to take a second and and acknowledge the people that put the budget together. Always. So, okay. George, stand up. George is our financial analyst. And okay, George, George is the lead with all the graphics. You have Claudia Campo, stand up. Stand she is up. the senior budget manager over operating. You have Hunter Foxwell, who is your senior budget manager over grants. That's the man you want to talk to about the CARES money. Uh -huh. Candy Cruz, who Yay. is your senior budget manager over CIP. And last but not least, oh, God Ms. Ballas, excuse me, not Ms. Ballesteros. She's got her married name. Oh. Sheila McLean, who is their fearless leader. Yay, Sheila. They put in a lot of hours, and they have well, quite a you. few staff at home, too, that's listening, I'm sure. So we just love wanted you guys. To, to let them know. Thank you. You all rock. You do a great job. We're very blessed to have you. And how y'all put up with this, I don't know. <laughs> just saying. I was in a meeting. Oh, well, I think we all were with them this week, right? I know I was. Mm -hmm. So God bless you. Well, you missed out, man. You should have. They were great. Anyway, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you.
All right, welcome to the Bradenton City Council meeting, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday, September 8th, 2021. I'm Mayor Gene Brown. Welcome to the City Hall Chambers. At this time, we'll ask Pastor Robert Bledsoe to come forward from Trinity United Methodist Church to say our invocation. Please stand. Let's join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we first and foremost give you thanks. Give you thanks for this new day for this chance to be together and to talk about matters that are important to uh, each and every person in this room and in our uh, wonderful city. God, we pray uh, that our words would be meaningful and well thought out and respectful, that we would treat one another with love in all of our conversations, that we would have ears to hear, and that we would be uh, kind in what we do and how we do it this morning. God, we especially remember uh, all of those in our community who are hurting or who are suffering, those who are sick, those who are hungry, those who are seeking employment or purpose or a way to make an impact here for the greater good in Bradenton and beyond. We remember those who wake up every day and put the needs of others before their own, those who serve our community so selflessly. And so, God, as we prepare to look forward at our agenda items this morning, I ask your blessing to be poured out upon each and every person who is here in this place, uh, and that your wisdom would be poured out upon them. That as these important matters are discussed and deliberated upon, that you would be honored and the citizens of our great city would be taken care of and looked after. So, God, we give this time to you and we honor you in all that you do. And all of God's people said together, amen. amen. Thank you. I'd like to call Chief Edwards, Deputy Chief Gear, and, and Chief Bevins to the front to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll call the meeting to order. Mrs. Melton, any proclamations, presentations? No, sir. All right. Um, thank you. We'll go to citizen comment. At this time, we're going to call for citizen comment. Um, you have, when you come to the podium, please, uh, on non-agenda items, please state your name, your address, and you'll have three minutes. Um, we're going to go with Sarah Hand first. Hi, my name is Sarah Hand, Morning. and my address is here in the city of Bradenton in um, 912 7th Avenue East, Bradenton, Florida, 34208. Thank you. Um, so what you have before you is a reminder of the Florida Business Incubation Association Fall Conference that will be hosted here in Manatee County, in the city of Bradenton next week. Mayor Brown is going to be there along with Dr. Scott Hopes from the county. Um, please, uh, anybody who wants to come, if you make sure that they register, um, because we'll be, we have incubation leaders from across the state. So you have the University of Florida that we've been working with in this, Ringling, Emory Riddle, um, and the evening event at Pier 22 is really about the landscape of investment and what it, the future of innovation is. We've been working for a long time to get them to come here, and we're excited that we were able to say that you are being um, hosted by the city of Bradenton. Um, and uh, just a note, we'll be back to tell you about is our work at Station 2 has, um, we've made the first round of the Guidewell Innovation Resilient Cities Challenge with uh, building capacity. So, um, thank you. Good, thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions or look forward to having everyone in town next week. So, thank you, thank you very much and great job. All right, Jeff Peters. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Jeff Peters, and I'm uh, building a new home at 327 River Point Drive Northeast on the east side. 
and um, it's a beautiful waterfront community there. And, uh, you know, it's a four acre property. And uh, it's a 13,000 square foot home that I'm building on four acres here. Really beautiful place with a cove and all those things. And, um, you know, throughout the three years that I've been involved in this, you know, I've went ahead and spent a lot of time and effort and physically doing a lot of the work myself as well. And, you know, the more I'm, the other day I was heading out to do some stuff and there was on just on my main street on the approach to my property, there's beds, there's trash, there's, you know, furniture, stuff like that. In fact, this morning on the way here, I actually drove through the whole neighborhood and took probably 10 or 15 different pictures. And, you know, the city's invested a lot of time and effort in the Mineral, Rings, Mineral Springs mm -hmm. project for the Riverwalk extension there. And the tax revenue is going to increase with that neighborhood being revitalized. You know, I've spent most of my life up in St. Pete, and I've watched what's happened in the old northeast section and just north of downtown, and I actually personally know the vice mayor there. My daughter went to school with her daughter. And so I've seen the effort that Kanika Tomlin and that group has made to actually revitalize the southern part of the city as well now, and the push is to get all that waterfront stuff done. You know, Pinellas is great because they've got a ton of property on the beaches for their property taxes. Here we don't have that. We have the river, and that's a beautiful thing for us because we don't have as much beachfront as they do. But, you know, with your taxes being able to be increased, I mean, this year alone, the trim notice just came in my, just on my land alone without the house being CO'd. You know, my property taxes are going up $1,500. So I'm thinking, like, what am I getting? And then if I look at Tidewater to the east of me in those communities and I look at the west side, I'm thinking, you know, the basic things that need to be done in order to pr help procure more income for you guys in those locations like the trash pickup when somebody rides through that neighborhood they're like well i don't want to live here you know and so that's what i'm here to try to see if we can't get some help on down there to uh because i'm physically out there picking stuff up myself throwing up my dump trailer taking it to the dump to try to help the community look a little bit better so i'm hoping that you guys can do something about that and maybe try to get us you know a little bit of help down there with some of the stuff brush and a bunch of different things on the side of the roads Okay, yeah. Uh, we'll, okay, sure. Go, Mr. Sanders. Um, you're, all my, you're my neighbor, obviously, and okay. I, I'm very familiar. I just went through the neighborhood this morning before I came here. There's still a lot of beds, and we need, as a council, need to discuss this more in depth, not during your three-minute presentation, but I'm going to promise you that I'm going to keep pushing this up for either uh, ordinance change or code enforcement uh, to do that we we have a very loose policy on uh, items that are placed out placed out in rental properties uh, placed out uh, other people dragging stuff over across the street you know drag it over drag it over to Brayton and they'll pick it up you know that's that's the motto out there and we need to have a serious conversation about this because it's not only affecting our services to the existing customers it's affecting uh, the neighborhood the, the view I mean, you're building a multi-million dollar house and, and you have to pick up mattresses yourself and haul them to the dump. Right. That's not fair to you. And that's not why you're paying those exorbitant taxes and will. You, you'll pay, you know, a, a, an exorbitant amount right. and uh, good for you. And, and there's going to be more of that. So as we, um, uh, this is something that's been long overdue for discussion. So I'm going to ask that we, we place, this, today's agenda is quite full. And so... Um, I'm going to ask that we, we place that, uh, I'm going to ask the city administrator to place that to, to, to about our trash pickup, what, what we pay for, what we cost us, if we need to uh, uh, revisit this in some way, because I'll be quite honest, it's not working. And it's not just only COVID related, it's related to operational issues. So I, I, you got my ear, and, and, and it's like I said, it's my neighborhood too, and I'm, I'm pretty unhappy about it. So you. if you got any more comments, that's fine, or any other council members. Yeah, you know, I, um, I uh, have seen a lot of stuff go on in that neighborhood, and there's a lot of you know, activity with some of the real estate stuff, and I'm sure that's driving the values up right now with the way the markets are. But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, that is one of the last segments of waterfront. That's what drove me down here from Pinellas is because after 50 plus years in Pinellas, you can't find what I found with that four acres on that property there. 
and especially it's such a unique piece of property that you know what I'm doing there is hopefully going to help drive that area in order to get the, the area better off because I've seen this transformation in Northeast St. Pete where I grew up at mm -hmm. um, and I've yeah. watched it and I see the value of the homes there now and I see the same thing happening right. to the south side of St. Pete. So. Thank you Mr. Roth. Yeah thank you. Um, Thanks for coming forward. This your your, your situation is not unique. Um, uh, it's my entire ward has the same problem. Gotcha. It's something I've been uh, trying to figure out how to get my arms around for some time now. I mean, we have a we have a driver shortage that's making our pre-existing problems look worse. So uh, I can tell you, I have been looking into this. Um, I uh, our poor uh, city administrator. I harassed him over the holiday weekend with text on this. Uh, called him at 801 on Monday morning you know I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out something that can help us beyond just you know what you're going but and, and, right. I, and I, I agree with you you know having this crap sitting around is just it, it, it drives to every you know I've got a property in in, in my area that, where they they put out a truckload I mean a, a dump truck load of stuff and we pick it up and they replace it <laughs> The next day, and I, I don't know where the crap's coming from. I mean, there's an eightplex there, but there's like, there's just no way these people are generating this much crap. So right. we have a systemic problem that existed, our driver shortage crisis. So thank you for coming forward. Um, it's, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out something on this. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and uh, hopefully we can get something done on this. Yeah, and I just wanted to, before Mr. Perry goes, Mr. Perry and I and Mr. McClellan drove around that area last week, and we saw some of it. And I think that, that as both councilmen have said now, it's not an issue that uh, is any blame to our public works or that department <coughs> right now. It's a problem that this council has, and it's going to be up to this council to solve. And, you know, from the standpoint of, how we do it and obviously sometimes how we do it is not only through code enforcement and penalty but also more money so that's something that you know the, the benefit to some of our citizens of the lower taxes then create some other issues so I think it's something that we have to look at strongly and figure out in a win-win situation and like I said this is nothing to do with with our public work staff now and so I don't want Mr. McCollum to think that this is a criticism on him because he would do it all, but it's going to take more trucks or it's going to take privatization. It's going to take how we do it. So, sure. Mr. Perry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Peters, thanks for coming down. I, I can assure you that uh, in my short eight weeks here and, and probably more particularly the last six, I don't think there's one issue that's been discussed more with the mayor and the council than the trash pickup and particularly in the, the east side. Um, it's a problem. I recognize it. I drove with my wife a couple of weekends ago, a few times, right into your property. It's about the second or third. Actually, it's about the third time I've been there. It's a beautiful piece of property, and I understand what you're saying about the redevelopment potential, and I absolutely agree with with, with about 99.9% .9 of what you said. The, the problem that we're facing, and I have this conversation as Councillor Roth and, and Councillor Sanders, who call me literally probably once a day about it. And it's okay. That's what they should be doing on behalf of their constituents and, and my administration. And Mr. McClellan and his folks in sanitation are doing what they can. But the, the problem is like a perfect storm. And what I mean by that is we have a capacity problem with drivers and CDLs. If you look at Hillsborough County, if you look at Manatee, the county itself using Waste Pro and Waste Management, there is great competition and a shortage of CDL drivers and the pay associated with it. We've increased the pay. Um, dollar an hour across the board. Uh, Mr. McClellan pulls rabbits out of his hat basically every weekend as he did this weekend trying to get additional drivers in to work the weekends and over time and pick up the routes. And our first responsibility of course is to um, the, the garbage collection itself and, and the solid waste and then the yard waste. A and I recognize what you're saying. What some of the councilors have pointed out, two problems outside of the capacity itself is compliance. And we have folks and, and, and Councillor Roth gave me some photos yesterday of an apartment complex, and they've got probably, I don't know, two, two roll-out full dumpsters of, of 
garbage, not garbage, but waste out in the front of their house. Some of it's bags, some of it's furniture, some of it's yard waste, some of it's this, some of it's that. And quite honestly, that's a compliance issue as well, as far as getting homeowners to take responsibility. Mr. McClellan and, and the service will pick up these large bulk items, but of course there's a, a charge associated with that. And so we're trying to work through that stuff, but I want to assure you that it is a high priority of this council, this administration, and the people that work within it to, to address it. Um, a city that doesn't look clean isn't, a, you know, isn't the city it wants to be. And so we're going to work diligently to find the solutions at the various causation levels. I appreciate it. You bet. Yeah, thank, thank you for addressing for, the Thank issues. you for coming forward. Yes. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, we have Ronald Lloyd Tompkins. You have three minutes. Please state your name and address. Um, there is, Scott about um and you we can address this now before but we don't have a proxy thing you've got three minutes and yeah, if somebody okay. else wants to talk that's fine to three, that's, that's fine. fine yes sir thank you um my name is ronald lloyd tompkins my wife and i own 918 29th street west in bradenton florida i'm a tax paying property owner in the friendly city bradenton florida i'm here as a private citizen and i'm gainfully employed uh, i'm not here to waste your time or mine i'm an orthodox christian 54 years old, adult white male. I'm a meat and potatoes kind of point to the guy, ask anyone that knows me. I don't sugarcoat it, and I deal on facts. Every day I deal with facts, day in, day out. I work here at the City of Bradenton Public Works and Utilities for you as one of your frontline employees. Um, I deal with, sorry, I lost my place. But not today. However, when I'm at work, I work for you in a multitude of capacities over the last seven years, all dealing with factual information. 